Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first stop on the 2016 Swatch Freeride World Tour here in Bainor Arcalis. I'm Dave Mailman, joined with my best buddy, Martin Winkler, freeride professional, all around great guy. And this is the first of five stops on this 2016 Swatch Freeride World Tour. Plenty of action in store. And uh, let's take a little look at what goes on here in Bainor Arcalis, Andorra. Benvenuti. First stop on tour here in Bainor Arcalis in Andorra. As you can see, nestled into the Pyrenees Mountains, just on the border in between France and Spain, very close to Toulouse and Barcelona. Plenty of uh, free ride peaks. The host of a fantastic four-star stop on tour, the El Dorado free ride. And after quite a few very successful events as a four-star free ride world qualifying series event, it stepped up to free in 2015 and delivered in a big way and uh, such a stellar event here that we decided to bring it back and start the tour off in style here in the Andorran Principality in this lovely resort of Bainor Arcaris. And as you can see, conditions here today, well, blue skies fighting against the clouds, but uh, still decent visibility, a couple degrees below zero, or uh, in the high 20s on the Fahrenheit scale if you're tuning in from North America. And uh, a fantastic day of riding in front of us. We'll be starting off with men's snowboarding, followed by the women's snowboarders, the women's skiers, and finishing off with the men's ski category as you can see the riders making their way on foot to the to the starting gate and once again this is the first of five stops on tour let's take a look at the other four here on 2016 of course by Nord Arcalis in Andorra followed up by Chamonix Mont Blanc in France Fieberbrunn Kitzbühler Alpen in Austria Haynes Alaska in the US of A and Verbier Extreme for the finals in the first week of April in Switzerland. So a full tour full of riding, three stops here in Europe to start things off. Then we go to a first cut and uh, those lucky riders, those riders talented and lucky enough to make it through to Alaska also requalify automatically for the 2017 World Tour and uh, get to go battle it out in the free ride Mecca of Alaska, where we were for the first time in 2015. That was quite a result. And here we are. This is the face that we'll be riding today, Basera Negra. Now, Martin, you've already been up and had a had a shot at riding down this one, so I'm going to let you talk us through it. Correct, Dave. A big shout out. Hello from my side. It's going to start again with the nice face inspection from I was uh, able to go up two days ago and had a, a really close look at the mountain, at the face, the snow conditions. Um, and uh, you're gonna see it in a moment. You're gonna see in a moment what I experienced during that run. This is the great thing about Martin, in case you're just tuning into the Freeride World Tour for the first time, is he is a former competitor, judge, and now a commentator, and he is an excellent skier. So we have the, the possibility, he always goes up a day or two before the event and actually rides the venue. And so we're going to take a look, uh, a first look with uh, Martin Winkler. Hey guys, McFly is back for another Free Ride World Tour season. GoPro first look series, starting this year in Valnor Arcalis. Beautiful terrain is waiting for us. Let's see what the riders can expect for their contest. We'll have several starts on this venue. Um, 
It all starts out really steep, heading straight into a really steep section. I'm going to show you a run a little further to the right, but that's one of the options. As we go down the ridge, we can see more and more options. You see down here, it's a little more open. Here we go. You can see already two different aspects. Really dry snow. And if we come a little closer to that side, you can hear it already, the crust. There it's sun-baked. Here we are a few meters below the start and you can already see the first features. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some tricks out there. The further down, the better the snow becomes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You see, there's a big bowl, quite some features to hit. Here we get to the lower part of the venue. There are a few entries into those couloirs you're gonna see in a minute. I'm gonna choose the one skiers left of it. A beautiful couloir that I'm gonna shred in a minute to pieces. Oh, yes! This bottom part is epic. Anything a free rider can want. There is no tension in the snow at the bottom. A little cooked on top. You have to watch out where you're going. Watch out for the rocks hidden underneath. It's still not high tide, not too much snow, but the snow that is here is amazing. Have a good one. Bye guys. Two days ago, Martin. Yeah, and that was in the, the evening. You could see everything was in the shade. Uh, we're going to see uh, in a minute the sun popping up and uh, making this face fully al alight. So very early morning, I think the conditions will be similar than I experienced. Uh, but uh, during the those first two categories, I think the, the conditions, especially at the top, will change quite a bit. Well, it looks like our reigning Freeride World Tour men's snowboard champion, Jonathan Dude Charlet, uh, is liking what he's seeing up the top there. So you said maybe a tiny bit of, uh, of crust, but in general, the snow is good quality. Um, th there could be a little bit more of it in places. Yes, and here we see why. Um, this whole slope, the, the, the face is has kind of a two, three different expositions. It's a 350 meters in altitude difference, which is not a lot for freeride events we have, but still enough to, to make them play. And as we, as I just said, it's uh, turning from southeast, where we, we have that crust, south-southeast, uh, into even northeast aspects, where it was really dry and, uh, yeah, lower power at the bottom. So uh, you're going to have uh, a lot of different conditions, and the riders have to cope with that. Okay, well, it's going to be an exciting day. Plenty of features on the face there as well, so we can expect a few uh, exciting jumps and uh, twists and turns before they let loose in the in the in the powder fields down the bottom. Yeah, I expect so. We're gonna see some really creative lines, I'm sure. Okay, and the creative lines will be coming at from 8:30 a.m. with the men's snowboarders, followed an hour later at 9:30 by the women's snowboarders. The women's skiers should be dropping in around 10 a.m. local time, and the men's skiers from 11 a.m. So we're starting early because we have blue skies. They are calling for the clouds to come in uh, in the early afternoon. So we want to get this thing done and dusted uh, before Mother Nature comes and ruins the party. But uh, as we're looking at it right now, the uh, skies are generally blue. And the riders uh, look pretty stoked to get things underway, and goodness knows we are. And before we do, though, we'd like to announce there is, you can get interactive with uh, four of our Freeride World Tour riders today. Um, send your, your question and answers into hashtag AskFreerideWorldTourRiders. Once again, that's hashtag AskFreerideWorldTourRiders. Just tune in to Facebook page, Freeride World Tour, you will find it. And uh, please send in your questions, they're happy to answer them. 
Okay, now we're going to take a quick look at uh, the few of the highlights, a little recap from the 2015 Men's Snowboard Tour, and then we're going to get things underway. Well, there we go, Jonathan Dudes Charlet taking the top spot on tour last year. Key here with the win in Alaska. Finishing up with a great result in Verbier. And Flo Orly, experienced veteran out of Austria. Colin Boyd. One event win. And there we go. So those are the uh, big dogs to watch out for. And of course, any of these riders capable of uh, pulling out the stops and creating some upsets here today. There's our start. Okay. Jonathan Charlet, the reigning world champ, Christopher Galvin, Jonathan Schnitzer, Ralph Backstrom, Harrison Fitch, and Jonathan Penfold. Backstrom, another former Freeride World Tour champ. Um, surrounded by a bunch of rookies there at the, at the back of the starting list. Here we have Jamie already in the Stargate, opening up that Freeride World Tour season. Pretty sure he's nervous, but at the same time relaxed. He knows what he's doing. He's been in that situation before. I think two, three years on the Freeride World Tour shapes a man. Yes, indeed. And he enjoys riding so much, so... Uh, well, top 10 finish here in 2015, last year. Requalified for the tour in seventh position. The young man out of uh, Fernie, Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Last season was a little tough for him. The season prior to that, he was really enjoying it um, with some great results, actually. And uh, right. that finished, really pumped him up to, to finished yeah. Finished second in the world in 2014. So Jamie definitely has the talent and uh, would like to move up back into the top three on the rankings. It's going to be very exciting to see what kind of line he chooses and what kind of snow he's expecting. You, maybe if you look close at his riding style, you can see a little bit the, the snow conditions. Um, no one has been in the face at 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning. So uh, we all don't know what the, the sun of yesterday and the day before had an effect on the face. There will be definitely a, a small crust. It was not too cold at night. We woke up really early, so we experienced not too cold conditions. Let's see what it had of an effect for this mountain. Well, there he is, Jamie in the start gate. So Jamie's ready to rock and roll. He's coming from Canada. They experienced some amazing snow conditions at the moment. Although he was for sure happy to come and see all his friends and ride with them here in Andorra. But uh, to leave a place that is full filled with snow is a it's tough one. It's always tough, that's for sure. Most of the riders showing up at least three or four days before the start of the event. Hoping to uh, experience, get a feel for the, for the snow in the local area. There's our judging panel. Judges getting ready from the right side. We have Lolo Bess, Tom Bird with the binoculars on, Bertie De Nervo, and Brand Moles. And head judge for this category is Dion Newport from New Zealand. All very experienced free riders, and uh, one absolute legend, Tom Bird, out of the US of A. That's kind of from the snowboard side, and yes, then we have exactly. on the skiing side just as much of a legend. Hugo Harrison, actually a real role model from, from my past. Okay, well, there we go. Rocking his uh, mustache from November. You can shave that off now, Jamie. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did half of it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks pretty All funny. All right, here, here we go. Drop it in. Jamie Rizzuto out of Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Do we have him already in the first air? You can see. It is a little crusty. He's not breaking through all the way all, all the time. 
the cook is breaking out. Another nice backside air. Do a little bit of a layback, taking it easy, spotting a little shoot here. See entering the shady part into that bowl. So the first section is done and dusted for him. For sure he is happy to get into that really powdery part. Although the powdery part means also that you hit more likely a shark, meaning rocks hidden underneath the snow. Ooh, getting a little jibby no. with it. Uh, for, well, you wanted to mix it up with a little, uh, what do you call those? Little, yeah, butter, little, little butter, butter 360, three. exactly. And uh, he got stuck on the, on the front side edge. Doing a little powder jibbing. They shouldn't knock him down too much for that. Though. I hope. He's in a flat, really flat part powder field. But control is one of the important parts of the criteria, and that was definitely a lack of control. Going to a more interesting bit. Ollie's into this next little couloir here. He's in an open. Oh! Oh, he was going for a backflip back on that one, but he didn't get the pop right. Not enough speed, probably, as well. Here he proves that he can do those butters, <laughs> even two in a row. Damn it that he didn't make it happen on the on the top one and yeah, that very unfortunate there for for JB, but I don't think that he's got it for his first result yeah, here that, in Andorra, that, that's for sure. Yeah, not not the result that he was looking for. He will be moving into first position as we take a look at the the line. It's very interesting to see. To, we have him going further to the skier's right or snowboarder's right side of the mountain. Actually, there is no other way to go even further right. That is the limit. Uh, it's quite an open terrain on the on the right side with that really yeah creative takeoff that he wanted to uh, show a nice backflip, but uh, he didn't get ca that catch enough air to uh, really stick it. Halfway through the rotation, he already landed. That's a shame. Well, there we go. You can see the judging criteria on screen. Obviously, well, this will show us throughout the season. Um, every time a rider comes down, we will see uh, the judging criteria, which will show a trend where the judging will go. This is uh, not nothing definite or dis score deciding, but just to let you know a little bit where where were the positive sides and the negative sides of this run according to the judges. And uh, after that, we're going to see some more detailed, yeah, we're going to see the score, which will show their opinion in detail. Yeah, you can see him. He's got it. He uh, was expecting something completely different out of his run. There is uh, no surprise. First appearance on the Freeride World Tour 2016. But he has another two goes. We have uh, That's right. Chamonix coming up and Fieberbrunn before we have the split for, for Alaska, Alaska so and Verbier. Yes, he is. At least two chances to make up for it and uh, move himself into the top eight, who will move through to uh, qualification for Haynes, Alaska, and then Verbier. Here we see the sun already hit the top part of the, the mountain full on. So it's uh, southeast, so it catches the sun really early. So the snow should be softening up a little bit, a little bit of less crusty up top. As we wait for our next rider to get ready to drop in to a rookie, Christopher Granbohm out of Sweden. Home mountain is a Verbier, so Swedish national, but spends most of his time in the uh, Swiss Alps, the Valais region. Finished up second in the uh, on the Freeride World Qualifying Series in the Europe and Oceania region. The Freeride World Qualifying Series split into two regions, Europe, Oceania, and the Americas. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the tour, through the Freeride World Qualifiers, or if they're already on the Freeride World Tour, finishing top 16 in men's ski. Well, here we go. We'll get back to that later. Christopher Granbaum off for his first ride on the Freeride World Tour. Taking a small air on top as well. This is the first ride on the Freeride World Tour. Pretty 
curious what we're going to see out of these young guys. We're going to have some more fresh names coming up soon. Another air. You can see it's pretty firm, those landings. As we said, southeast orientated, still uh, already sun affected and a little crust at the mo in the morning. Another great right. air, perfect control in the air and in the landing. So um, I'm liking what I'm seeing yeah, from very, the, this very young man. Solid on his feet up top. Playing it casual through that uh, middle powder field. And there we could see uh, hitting a rock on the way to a next air. Really have to pay attention all the time. You can see those little uh, dark spots sticking out the snow. Those are the, the rocks hidden underneath. Or the sharks, as we call them in the free ride lingo. Correct. He gets to the bottom part. Another big air lining up. All right. Such a casual style. Yep. It makes it look so easy. That's what the judges want to see. Wow, I'm really impressed. Especially by uh, his body language. It was, uh, you couldn't feel any nervous, nervousity or nervousness. What yeah, do you call it? Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't feeling nervous at all. No. Like a, uh, a walk in the park. <laughs> he made it look for, like that. For Christopher Granbaum. The Swedish Congrats. rookie. Yep. We can see a very similar line choice uh, to Jamie Rizzuto. Oh, Jamie Rizzuto's line choice is here. And uh, I guess we're going to see in a minute the line choice of the Swedish rider. But I can tell you that it was very similar to that. Uh, only some uh, small variations. But he mixed it up with a lot more jumps, a lot of control. And I think it's going to be a decent score. Yeah, well, there you see. Here we have everything in green, which is already a good indication. We have all those categories, line, fluidity, control, air and style, and technique. Those are the five categories that the judges pay attention to. And of course, it comes down to an overall score, which we come see right now. And there it is. Drop it in. 80 points. It's so points possible so an excellent ride from and uh well that's quite a way to start the <laughs> start the tour he will be pleased with that there we that's go for sure throwing his hat in the ring from the get-go next up is florian orley the vet out of innsbruck austria and geez flo has been on tour for ages that's all i can say finished up last year in the top three, world number three to be exact. And finished second here in Bainor Arcalis. Let's have a look what we see here. Oh! <laughs> the special outfit. I love it. The Gorilla, the gorilla. Boy. That's right. Great. Throwing horns and wearing fur. That's a way to enter his last season on tour. And this will not be just a joke run. He's not a clown although he looks like it with his gorilla outfit. No, you will see in a minute. He's come so close to winning the world title so many times that if he, this is really his last year, he's going to be going all out. Look what he's heading into. Yeah. <laughs> that is really exposed. That ski is left, couloir. Well, I saw some riders spotting it. We will see more of that to come. He is the first to billy goat it. And Great execution. Yeah. I just had a small second the impression that he, that he hit a rock. Down, but no, you can see those peppers feet. all the way here. Yeah. I went through here yesterday on a second four run and uh, I hit several rocks. So yeah. hope so the riders really take care here. Once again, but that top part was already great. He never makes it easy on himself, Flo, but it's always very impressive. <laughs> you can see really taking care not to hit any rocks. It's a flat part of the mountain, getting into the lower section to the skier's left. And that's what judges as well, but appearing again, heading into another couloir with a mandatory air, lining it up. Nice, perfectly speed, execution, perfect, yep. and with high speed, ollieing over those cookies. All right. With the gorilla outfit. Uh, gotta love it. <laughs> Loving it. He's an animal. Absolutely. Flo Orley. There will be some huge cheers and applauses from his home, Keanu, Momo, and Nina, 
will be psyched about his run. Loving it. Well, there we go. So ignore Rizzuto on screen there. That was Orly. And uh, that was a very difficult choice of line. That's yeah, for sure. Very technical top part. That's what uh, Flo is known for. He has uh, nerves that are nerves very of thick. Nerves steel, yes, yeah. nerves of steel. Now the that top question. position, especially with the conditions that we have at the moment, it's super sharky. Um, and so to enter that top section, here we here see we it go, again. Yeah. He's actually barely on snow, taking off, landing in that super tight spot, shutting down speed, no issue of control. It was just the smoke in the air that we made him disappear for a slight split second. And here the second air at the bottom, perfect execution, couldn't be done any better. Loving it. Yeah, close stuff. Innsbruck local representing <laughs> Tyrol, Austria. Father of two and above 40 goes. years old. 72.75 in second position currently for Florian Orley, the gorilla guy. <laughs> With the that. teeth, even the bats. <laughs> <Pasola. laughs> Watch oh. out for more surprises during the season from Mr. Ole. Yes, now another legend on tour out of the UK is uh, Sasha Ham. Sasha is back. Yes, indeed. Now, X. Sasha's motto, speed is your friend. <laughs> that's, that's the best thing about Sasha. The second best thing. He used thing. to be a professional car racer. Yes, exactly. So, uh, that really fits well to him. And then he, then he gave that up and uh, decided to uh, take up snowboarding as a hobby. Uh, professional, I want to say bonds trader. <laughs> I, sh I should know this. Anyways, yeah, he, lives, he lives and works in London. He, and, he sits uh, a lot in front of his computer. Yeah, but uh, when he is on the, on the board, you will not okay, well, recognize him anymore. So is that not? Okay, well, Let's check from his riding style. I think this is Colin, Colin Boyd. Boyd. Yes. yes, style of Colin. Getting his front nose caught. Please don't. He's still tumbling. Hopefully he gets into control again. There yes, he does. With his backside edge into the snow. Well, he is okay. Yeah, hands up in the hands air. Up. That's the international free ride sign for I'm okay. You do not have to uh, send the guides down the face. So unfortunate start to things for Colin. Yeah. I can imagine that he's not even off his line. I think that is the way he wanted to go through, but just not it how was he not wanted the to style. go through it. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. it. Here you see so many rocks still yeah. sticking out. Well, Colin finished fourth here in Andorra last year, so he likes the uh, likes the mountain, but uh, not really his friend this year. What a shame. I was expecting a lot from him today. Oh, totally. Well, he finished up fourth in the world last year. So expecting big things from Colin Boyd. He was in the race for the world title up until the last event in 2015. Came into Verbier with a, a shot at taking home the world title. So he has plenty of talent. Absolutely. And he is the one in my eyes, that can combine a lot of uh, aspects. So he has the free freestyle touch, but he also chooses amazing technical areas to ride. Oh, and here he like proves his <laughs> what I just said, shooting out the bottom. But that entry into that bottom part was absolutely mind blowing. Another 360, this time perfectly stomped, as I just said, technical and freestyle -y. Like what a mix. The way to go, but unfortunately, with a with a big loss of control at the at the top part. Now you can see the body language. He's stoked with the bottom half of his run, and they're very frustrated with uh, the way things started off. But finished, unbelievable. Finished with a bang. And another father that we just seen on screen. Uh, one year old Alfonso will be al probably already watching, although it's pretty late at home. I think he's from uh, Boston. Uh, living in Maine now, actually. Yeah. Well, there we go. 
Here we have the tumble. And uh, that's why there's that big red line next to control because Colin completely lost it after that first beautiful backside air. Recovered. And that's uh, going through feet. that sand clock just uh, at the bottom of his uh, tumble. Yep. And here comes the highlight of the run. Fantastic. Entering that top, uh, bottom part just ollie with a technical up. ollie. The landing and between a 360. Those two rocks, the backside but have a look three. at the, the takeoff, please. Uh, maybe you've seen the sharks that are, or the, the. Yeah, yeah, straight through the barely, barely covered over rocks, basically. Yeah. That's what the riders really have to take care of. The takeoff spots are mostly not covered with a lot of snow. Well, there we go. A little shout out to the family back home on the East Coast, living in Portland, Maine currently. And 40 points there for Colin. But he's got plenty of talent and uh, two more events where he can still make up for uh, that early mistake here in Val Nord Arcalisa. And next up is Emilia Badu, 2014 Free Ride World Tour, good snowboard champion out of Flanty. With his world title two years ago, he had to uh, pause for one season after a really heavy, heavy crash in Chamonix just before the first event last season. Um, he told me that he actually is happy to be still here in one piece, exactly. alive. Um, so he was not too bothered or too bummed to, to lose a season no. uh, because he knew he will be back. And here he is on his comeback run. Actually, his comeback last year, the second place finish in Verbier. You're right. He came back in the last stop. But this is obviously come back to full-time competition on the Freeride World Tour. He takes the middle section. You can see it's getting more creamy. The, the sun really does a nice effect on the snow now. Yes, indeed. Beautiful air into that chute. Oh, I can tell from what we saw a tiny, that it was a, a little, little loose of control. control exactly probably the a little setback. That's just an assumption, but nothing, nothing too bad. It didn't bad, look though. perfect. No, not perfect, but uh, should be. Uh, two the more the judges to are a little higher up the mountain, so. I'm pretty sure that they saw it with their binoculars. Go through the video reviewed right after. And there, as you can see, still the snow looks great, but there's not a whole lot of it in, in quite a few places. So this is Emilien playing it safe. In, in that middle section only to lose, so that's why they're not racing through there. Actually, Flo Early went through it He's just straight hit, down. Hit it from a different angle. Yep. Straight into the slough. Ah, uh, that's why he did take a little more time to hit another air. Yeah. Oh. With a little back seat, but it was a huge one. Yeah. So. Uh, no, he still rode out of it. He didn't have a tumble, but it's no. true. It wasn't a, a perfect, uh, perfect landing. But a great but a combination. Good double, you yeah, could great, see, great first I was a little surprised sure. that he didn't uh, um, approach it faster, as we've seen from Flo. But uh, then he answered with another air, just riding out of it. There we go. So pretty calm, cool, and collected up top. Recovering from his three months surfing in Bali this summer. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> had thrown, thrown down a few powder carves and then really opening up snowboard style down the bottom. He has the right sponsor with Rip Curl to support him with snowboard gear and surf gear, so. Taking advantage of that. Well, the judges like the line and the rest of it. A little bit iffy. So we'll the criteria to see what the uh, score comes in at. You can see the, the GoPro uh, full of snow and <laughs> bent back, so I can't imagine that he did a front roll or at least had his head in the, in in the, the snow, snow at some point. Well, there you go. Third position, but only 50.25 points for Emilia Badu. Can do better, and he surely will in uh, our next event in Chamonix. Next up, out of the U.S. of A.
Truckee, California, Sammy Lubke. This guy is the style master. There's your current standings on screen. Grandbaum, Orly, Badu in that order. And uh, plenty though of riders still to come, so those standings will certainly change. Sammy Lubke, once again, actually was out of Truckee, currently living in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. And, and actually growing up in Alaska. Goodwood. Yes. If I remember right. Exactly. And uh, Alaska is known for big mountains, big mountain riding. And uh, this man. Creative lines in big mountains. And we've seen it over the last three, four years on the Freeride World Tour. And the ultimate style master. Finished up last year, second in the world, and uh, top five. By Opening run for Sammy Livki, for sure for another title, a night title contender. He was so close for it, two, three times. Beautiful backside three there. And that's why mixing up with freestyle elements, perfect control and style. This is the his big plus that everything he does, he make it look smooth. He puts in a tweak, makes it look so easy. Literally, Sammy and uh, Dude Charlet battling it out down until the last run of the season last year for the world title. Playing it safe here in the middle, not to hit any sharks. He already pushed his score with that beautiful 360 at the, pop at the top. But uh, so he's got four the bottom collected. It's rolling over, so it's really hard to navigate to find the perfect takeoff spots. That's why it took a little time. A little shift in the air, shutting down speed. Will he take another air? Yes, yeah. he does. Got a little grab Fluidity into that one. down at the bottom. Little slash. Yes, that's what we, how we know him. <laughs> Getting into that white room. Love it. He wants a few face shots. Putting a little pressure on the tail. Sending the snow flying. Blinded by the white powder here. In so the lines that Arcalis, we saw yes. so far are kind of dividing to far skiers left or far and far riders right. Uh, like Jamie Rizzuto, uh, the Swedish rookie, and Sammy, for example. Sammy definitely executed it really well. Not as fluid, probably, as uh, the Swedish rookie. But uh, the top part with his 360 definitely set him apart from the others. Um, let's see what the judges will think of that. As I said, line was not the most critical, but with Aaron Style, he pushed himself a lot. So uh, curious what the score is going to be. There we go, in the second spot, 75.75. Yeah, for Sammy Lubke, it's a decent result. You know he can, he would like to and can do better than that. Showing off his mustache. <laughs> I think they all still live in November. That's exactly it. People don't understand that reference. The month <laughs> of November. The men, a lot, a lot of men around the world grow uh, mustaches um, to raise awareness for testicular cancer. So we call it Movember. And next up is our reigning world champion, Jonathan Dudes Charlet, as you can see on his helmet out of Chevy Mont Blanc. A little hug and kiss to the uh, friends and family back home. Big brother Babs, as always, he's here with his best buddy, JP. Off and riding his dudes. What a complete rider. Oh no, <laughs> already starting with a with a butt check. That's, That's not his style normally. No. no, he won this event last year, reigning world champ and reigning event champion here in Bainor Arcalis. Little butt check, Can he? Uh, he's gonna have to make up for it. Very complete rider, as I wanted to explain just before. Very solid, riding big mountains. He's a mountain guide in Chamonix. So he's uh, for sure used to navigating through rocks and steep parts as we see right now. 
very comfortable in all kinds of terrain yeah, and mixing it up with freestyle elements. And of course has those freestyle tricks. Started off uh, his career as one of the uh, freestyle kids out of Sham, going for a little backside 180. And straight on onto a rock. a rock. There we go. That's just one of those things, the landings, they look clean. It's not speaking for his experience. He thought he will get away with it, but it's really rocky, as I said. Words like that into the POW is hard enough, but landing on rocks a little bit too hard for the control for dudes. That was Sending a brilliant it. front side air, though. That was great. Ah! Oh! And then just hit another rock there. Nothing he could do about that. It looked like now, a, a wide open I hope open he's okay field. because that was quite, uh, a, quite a fall, quite an impact. No, he's okay. He's but a he's tough kid. Okay. That's good. That's right. So our, once again, reigning world champ and actually two-time world champion because he won the Swatch Freeride World Tour in 2012 as well. There's the line. So once again, riders left. Looking for uh, some creative jumps and just getting unlucky with the the snow conditions today. And as you can see, that's uh, not going to be the, the best score of dude's career. Now you can see the trend from the judges already. Everything in red and orange. It's not what you would expect from a double world champion. All or nothing. That's exactly it. He, he kind of lives by the same Three-time freeride world champ Xavier Delarue. They're both the Frenchmen, and it's go big or go home. And uh, you know, usually they go big, and sometimes it just doesn't work. And go home. <laughs> and they go home. <laughs> That's exactly it. So, <laughs> unfortunate run for dudes, but you know what? He's probably going to win the next one at home in Chamonix. Anyway, so, you never know, and it, the season is far from over. Christopher Galvin, another Californian. Coming up next, very solid rider. Finished up uh, in the last qualification spot off of last year's tour rankings, world number eight. And, uh, finished up sixth here in Andorra last year. Minor Arcaris. That was kind of his, uh, you know, top ten finishes throughout the year. Sixes, you know. Yeah, you he never Best had finish, a, six, a standout finish, eight, result. No, that's exactly he, uh, it. Kind of uh, solid enough to requalify. There's no way of playing safe in these mountains that those guys ride, but uh, definitely he didn't want to push it probably to the max. There is some more potential hidden in his talent that we see right now with a 360. Unluckily with a butt check, it was a way more firm landing than he thought it was. That's a bummer because that was a really nice execution in the air, but the landing is not in favor in his score. So that pretty much disqualifies him from moving into the top three currently. So you see the all the runs have kind of two sections, that top steep part, where you have to make up your score from the beginning, and then you have that rollery Midsection. Bumpy uh, flat midsection. Nice to ride. You can see yeah. dry snow. And he's heading to a new zone we haven't seen yet before. To the center of that, those couloirs. And where he's heading is really technical. I hope he's in the right couloir. And he's not. <laughs> well, doing a little bit of billy goating there. Mountain. Yes, he's not. Okay. I would have been really surprised. Who? I'm, I'm glad he didn't go for it. Because it's so rolling over, that it's hard to, to tell which cool war is which. Yes. That's actually also why I took the far skiers left in my forerun that you've seen just before, which is more open and uh, easier to to reach because it's the left-hand border and there are two other options in the middle which are not easy to, to, to get into. He would have needed to uh, just uh, turn left three turns before. Now, this is something that we 
rarely, if ever, see actually on tour is a snowboarder taking off his board to walk up out of a bad situation. Yeah, now, yeah any rider actually, um, because uh, those guys are prepared so well and can read the terrain. Absolutely, yeah, they are top of their game, and uh, that's very unusual. But uh, now my actually, my a great sign to you, though, is to say no. Is I'm to not say no. Going. That's, no, that's exactly it. That's the smart thing to do for sure. But does that uh, disqualify him? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. taking off the board oh, yeah, is uh, is a no score. Okay, there we go. So he will not score. So unfortunately, Christopher Galvin won't even uh, no shot at finishing in the top five here. And so while Christopher Galvin is uh, putting his board back on and finding a safer route through that very technical midsection, we'd like to remind everybody that uh, you can throw out your questions to the Freeride World Tour riders at hashtag Ask Freeride World Tour Riders. Once again, hashtag Ask Freeride World Tour Riders. To be precise, it's a uh, hashtag Ask FWT yes. Riders. Um, put that in. Go to Facebook, ask a question, put the hashtag, ask FWT riders, and uh, if you're lucky, it will appear in a minute when uh, we have the Q&A on top with uh, the selected riders, and uh, they will have to answer them for you. So check out the Freeride World Tour Facebook page. And, and, and there we go. And speaking of hashtag ask FWT riders, Davide is up the top with Ralph Backstrom. Hi guys, I'm here with ba Ralph Backstrom. We have a question from him from Jeremy from Grob. Um, what are you thinking about before you drop in? Uh, most of the time I, I have a pretty clear head and I just know what features I'm going to hit. And uh, yeah, you don't really even think about it. You don't think about anything. You just let your brain take over and uh, yeah, get into the flow state and just uh, just flow, man. Let's let her flow. <laughs> we got one more from Glenn from Southampton. What's your favorite stop? Uh, you know, it's pretty hard to compete with Alaska. Um, yeah, you get the steep spines, uh, a lot of features, um, tons and tons of snow. It's, uh, yeah, got to get up there. Check it out. Cool. Well, Ralph is dropping in next, and back to you guys. Thank you very much, Davide. Best of luck, Ralph. And there we are, back to the bottom with Christopher Galvin. And we already know what the score is. It does not score. And our next rider into the score into uh, the start gate here at the Swatch Freeride World Tour. By Nor Arkelis, stop number one out of five is our German rookie. Schnitzer qualifying in the top spot. It's great to see him back. He already had a full season on the Freeride World Tour. He had to go back to the qualifiers and re-qualify. That's what he did. Uh, yes, indeed. That's why it doesn't say rookie on my sheet. But yes. Yeah, back on and tour. And if I remember right, not in full control on that landing, unfortunately. But what I remember right from that season he was on tour, he was going big. And uh, he didn't hold back at all. He was not the most con constant rider, so he had a few crashes. That's why he had to go back to the qualifiers. But I think we can expect a lot from this uh, young German rider. Yes, indeed. Well, his yeah, his best finish was a uh, spot uh, in 2014 in Chamonix, and has managed to uh, requalify through the 2015 Freeride World Qualifiers. Once again, number one in the Europe Oceania region. And a German national out of Munich, but a whole mountain is Andermatt, Switzerland. 33 year old. So, once again, an experienced free rider, and uh, very happy to be back amongst the elite on the Swatch Free Ride World Tour. Here, heading into the lower section, really steep, as we've seen. Burdu and Olif Olif Flo, and he executed it in a double. Really creative. Without hesitation, great control. That's what the judges want to see. Yes, indeed. And 
one of the wonderful things about the free ride world tour is not all of these guys and gals are full time free ride professionals as we take a, a look at the line here we have it's probably one of the most obvious lines that we see today the big center couloir unluckily on his first drop he had a little control issue sliding on his butt but afterwards everything was clean um, of course the 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 run itself is not so long as we just seen before. It's only 350 meters of vertical. So uh, if you have a small issue, this uh, takes even more of your score than in maybe other venues. So it's going to be not one of the top ones. But not bad. Fourth position currently for the part-time free rider, full-time carpenter, actually. <laughs> That's what he does. He's working with wood. He's building houses when he's not riding down faces, mountain faces. You talk to him later. I need a carpenter. <laughs> there in you go. <laughs> All right, Johanna Schnitzer, so currently in the fourth spot with three riders yet to come. There are current standings. Grandbaum, Lubke, Orly, Schnitzer, and getting ready to drop in. Golf Backstrom. So world number five. 2013 Freeride World Tour champ. And you can see on his helmet that he has some special device, a hero cast by GoPro. We're going to see some uh, POV footage in a second by Ralph. Getting into the skier's right side with a beautiful grab over these obvious takeoffs. Do we see another air into that one? Yes, we do. Yep. Makes it look so easy. Just a quick turn into that takeoff. Is, is it just me or is he going a little faster through the powder section than some of the guys? Yeah, he was pretty fluid. Here, nice. taking it bigger than others as well with his uh, standard uh, backstrom style. The hands tucked in a little bit. <laughs> it's very easy to tell if it's a Ralph or not on the mountain from a far distance. And you know, one of the things I noticed last year is when dudes had a bad contest, Ralph had a good contest and vice versa. And right now, he's he's living up to that. True. No crash. That, that's the, the both of them. They go for a win or for a good score or for nothing. And uh, here we had what you just uh, explained. So Ralph with a good score. Could that put him into the top spot? Uh, I don't believe so. We, uh, he made it look easy, but uh, it was not the most difficult uh, terrain he was riding in. Um, it took all features, not the biggest. We've seen bigger ones today. And uh, I think that he will not land but on the very top. Our Swedish rookie is still going to be holding on to a uh, number one position. Well, there you go. The ju judges liked it across the board. Line, fluidity, air and style, control technique. Lots of green there, that's always a good sign. So let's see it is I a know. very, very similar line to uh, to the one number one spot. But uh, Just for Granbohm, once again, our Swedish rookie. You can see now that Christopher really did lay down a really good run. When you have uh, Ralph Backstrom following your tracks. You know you've done something right. Yes. There we go, 77.75, so into second position. You're spot on, Martin. Christopher Granbaum, the Swedish rookie, still holding on to the top spot. There he is in the hot seat with a, an 80-point score. And he's second ride of the morning. Still, Ralph so. is happy with his yeah, run. Yeah, Ralph stoked, definitely. He threw down some good airs, stayed on his feet. And, uh, and no the snow is really nice to ride. And the snow is so great. They have, a, they have a grin on their face anyway, coming down this mountain. It really is a pleasure. If you don't hit the rocks, you have a really nice run. So next, next in will be another one of our rookies. Once again, a rookie holding down first place currently. Up now, a young American, Harrison Fitch, out of... Snowbird, Utah, his home mountain. Born in Boise, Idaho, grew up in Sun Valley. And the 
20 year old. To win this year. There he is, Harrison Fitch, getting ready for his first run on the Free Ride World Tour. Finished up second place in the Americas region on the Free Ride World Qualifying Series. Also following uh, to the side, to the very skier's right side, not hitting any ear yet, which I'm a little surprised because there are not so many opportunities to, to build up your score. Taking the same air, even a little bigger than uh, Ralph Backstrom, but unfortunately riding around top features, which... Uh, I'll be knocked down for a little bit. Yeah, you kind of cannot build up your, you're not getting knocked down, but you're not building, building up, up your, your score. score exactly. It's a, however you want to see it. It's the same result. Um, taking another little air into that connecting zone, which is a little flatter, cruising through the pow, trying not to hit rocks. As I said in the course preview, the snow that there is is really good and nice to ride, no tension in it. A pure pleasure. Another little air into that bottom section. I think Trying Harrison's to shut down speed for another more original line at the bottom. It's really rocky in there. Hopefully he doesn't get caught on the yeah. on the rock. Ah, it goes for the nice little slob grab. That was definitely the biggest jump of his run, and uh, kind of he wanted to prove or and show that he actually that can he go big, go bigger. And I'm uh, pretty sure that's just my assuming that he wanted to have a score in, have his first run on the Free Ride World Tour down, safe, with a score, and uh, probably building up the, the well, tension throughout the season. That's exactly right. Nothing wrong with playing it safe, especially when you know some of the big guns, some of the big names have, uh, have gone down early. It's always good to get a solid or a decent result yeah. into your uh, ranking to start the season, and that's exactly what Harrison Fitch has done here. Judges weren't uh, terribly impressed by the line, but all the other judging criteria categories were in the green. That should be a, a decent score. There we go, up into the 60s, and the fifth spot, 62 points for Harrison Fitch with one rider left to come, unless we go back to the top to catch up with a few of the riders who didn't start. But Jonathan Penfield, another of the uh, young Americans, will be the next to drop in. And there he is, the Swedish rookie, Christopher Granbom, still on the hot seat from the second run of the morning, 80 points. It looks like he doesn't really know what's I, happening. I know, looking a little bit. We have a next rider on course. Sorry, in. Jonathan Penfield. Nearly missed him. On course, a little variation in the top section. It's still a little crusty, but you can see that it's uh, still easy to ride. You break through easily, <coughs> especially with only one board underneath your feet. It's also a little easier, although easy is a very relative term. Term exactly. Jonathan Penfield winning the, uh, taking the top spot in the free ride world qualifying America's region. And a couple wins on the uh, four star series last year. Another little air in the connection part. This time a little further to the skier's left, landing in some fresh tracks, enjoying the snow, going all the way to the skier's left. Oh, no, actually in, into the middle section of that big block. Here we have it, a narrow couloir yeah. filled with perfect powder. Nice backside air there. I don't know if there are too many opportunities to jump. No, they're not. But uh, the riding itself is uh, definitely a lot of joy. But the score will not be pushed that hard upwards. Well, compared to the other rookie qualifier out of uh, the Americas region. Harrison Fitch, how do you, how do you think he's gonna 
Here, here we see the, the line that uh, also Christopher Galvin wanted to take, where he got lost. You can see the track yeah. uh, right next to the red line. And uh, last rider, really, Mr. Penfield actually found it perfectly, the, the, the entry of that line. But uh, it will not push his score that far, is my interpretation, because it didn't do something. There was no wow effect in the, in the last part of the run. It's a solid score. It is a score, but uh, definitely he will not step up the game, or he will have to step up the game not for the be, next event. Not going to be a spot on the podium, that's for sure. But the judges giving him uh, the green light in everything except for the choice of line. So spot on, good call there. And here comes the scores. Well, taking over the uh, fifth position from Harrison Fitch. 64 points, so pretty good day out on the mountain for the rookies, actually. Yep, and the, the big difference between the last two rookies that we saw was actually the one had a better top part and the other one a better lower part. Better lower section. Back to Kabi. I think this rider, super young gun out of Chamonix, has a lot of potential. Yes, he does, which is why he was awarded season wild card back on tour finished in ninth place so did not requal automatically requalify but just too good not to have him with us and that's what i'm talking about sticking the backflip perfectly into the crud the judges will love that it's his signature maneuver and as you can see very solid on his feet chamonix style the only thing i'm asking for of him is not to scare us anymore <laughs> the way he did but it was not intentionally. He is a, such a strong rider with his young age, a passionate surfer. Time he's spending in countries with waves. And you can see that in his riding style as well. Loving the backflip. He does it wherever he can, where there is enough pop. Landing another solid air at the bottom. Bring it down. I think that's going to be a really nice score for him yes, for the opening of the season. Well, he's definitely done better than he did here last year. Finished in ninth position. And uh, with that run, wow, pretty much had a lot going for it. I, I reckon that's going to push him into the top five. Oh, that's for sure. Like, uh, I would even, yeah, I don't want to call it, but. No, no, call it. Call he's, it. he's on the podium. Okay, all right. McFly's he must be on the podium. That, that backflip with such a perfect landing, like uh, that must have boosted his score. Because there's not much to do on this mountain. Uh, you're it, it's over pretty quick, the 350 vertical, and you have that middle section in between where you cannot win or lose that much, except of crashing. Okay, well, listen, our top three is Christopher Granbaum on 80 points. We have Look everything at, yeah, in green. Yeah, the judges like that for sure. Ralph Backstrom sitting at 77.75 and Sammy Lipke at 75.75. So it's really tight at the front, but Boom. have a look at that beautiful backflip. And like, mm, there is no issue that's in the perfect. landing. Yeah, no, that's absolutely In perfect. a steep section, it's uh, unexpected. So uh, I hope the they give him the props. Yeah, maneuvering through the bottom. That's a solid jump there as well. Actually, I think it's the jump that also Christopher, the current leader, did. And uh, well, I'm pretty go. sure he's going to be on the very top the there. The of truth, 78.25. Yes. Great score. Well, you called it top three coming in just underneath Christopher Granbaum. And Craig, he can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher's like, really? This what is, am I doing this here? This is amazing. But well deserved. What a great run of Christopher. Okay, well, Camille Armand, so representing for Chamonix. And another rider out of Great Britain, but representing for Chamonix as, as well, his home resort. Once again, living uh, in uh, London, <laughs> London, England. Legendary Sasha Ham, former racer of cars, got go. into snowboarding because he just enjoyed riding mountains. And here oh. he is on the world tour, always going big and fast, that's yeah. his signature, and that's what he's showing from the first start. Well, 
Last year's world number six, he's capable of winning events when he can stay on his feet. Yes, another original takeoff no one else did before. We've seen some tracks going through that, but this was an original approach to it. Here we have the middle section. He doesn't take the connecting little jump. I don't think it matters that much. Don't know what he was in, what he what had he in mind. For exactly. Don't follow Christopher Galvin's tracks. <laughs> 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 now he's going also for the skier's right side and going even bigger, bigger than the others. With a grab and a solid Stand landing. Stand at Sasha Ham lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, well, as we said, he goes fast, he takes big jumps, and when he does it, and he puts it all together and he stays on his feet, he usually ends up on the podium. And to be honest with you, uh, looking at the scores and that, if I remember Christopher's line, the leading Swede. Yeah, 80 points is what he's... I would have Sasha in first. I claim it. Okay. He took the, the last air bigger than anyone else. Really close to the rocks, but in full control. He was fast at, at the top. Had an original air coming out of the top section, and <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> he is a character. Applauding the, the rookie in the hot seat. Yes, indeed. And saying, well, but you know what? I'm I might take over. Down. Yeah, thanks for keeping it warm for me. <laughs> yes. Let's check that again. Up top, he was. Look, perfect stomp, like a yep. like a park landing. Fast and furious. And here we go, the last jump. You see the tracks? They were like two meters. Farther down. Fur further up, yeah. or his further down. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, the moment of truth. Will it be Christopher Grandbaum or Sasha Ham? Judges could surprise us, but uh, yeah, we're definitely looking at top three, huh? We can agree on that. Ralph, oh yeah, Ralph Baxter was a 77, 75. There we go, and it's coming in. He's loving it. He's already got. And this he spot. is 81.75. Number one. There we go, taking over the top spot with the last run of the day is Great Britain's Sasha Ham out of London that's UK. right out of London England <laughs> yeah, and that's right Sasha speed is your friend and uh, speed and big air has uh, put Sasha uh, into uh, the top spot of the first event of the year here at the Swatch Freeride World Tour by Nord Arcalis and that's it for the first category of the day of men's snowboard and the uh, women's snowboarders coming up next well wow yeah exactly took the words right out of my mouth martin wow i like indeed. what i'm seeing me too this is a great way to start the season and smiling faces yep great runs a great podium no big it fails. was exciting lots of suspense <laughs> sasha Ham and he has the rookie nice. career wow. on tour. Yeah. Okay, and we are going to take a look once again at uh, our top contenders from the 2015 Swatch Freeride World Tour. Here they are, the women to watch out for in 2016. Estelle Ballet out of Switzerland, reigning world champion. And just a pleasure to watch. Lady Elodie Bouton, another one of our world champs. And Floor Markser as well. 2011 world champ. So only world champions you know, on the women's side of things. Of course, there's a few rookies in there, but the uh, top three spots held down by our current and two former world champs. And uh, well, the action is going to be uh, 
fast and furious and hot and bothered on the women's side of things. The girls are uh, all serious competitors and uh, a very talented crew of uh, women snowboarders on tour with a few, uh, few rookies to watch out for. Invitee, along with, uh, once again, Anne Floor Markser, Estelle Ballet, Michelle Locke out of Canada, Elodie Mouton from France, Michaela Holsten from Finland. There we go. Those are our seven women's Shout out to Nicola Toast. Yes. Unfortunately, she cannot attend the first event. We miss you. Yep. Heal up soon. She's, uh, yeah, she's on the bike a lot, getting back in shape getting her head and neck ready. I'm pretty sure we're definitely gonna see her in Delbier. Yeah. Well, she, it hey, must she, have been her she favorite told, event she last told, season. She told me she's uh, she's ready to be back for uh, for Fieber Brood anyways. She's very optimistic. Well, you know what? That's we're gonna good. start things off with a bang here. This is, uh, this is Marion Herty and it's her birthday. And <laughs> going full <laughs> speed into that first air. Fully excited to start that season. Couldn't even wait to get out of that gate. Stay on your feet in that little crud. It's really crusty still, um, uh, but she handles it well. That's what the really the judges want to see. Some aggressive, controlled riding, motivated, playful. That's what she's showing from the from the start. That's good. And Bertie Denervo actually informed me that Marion would be taking over from Nicola Tuss. Let's see what she's got here. Yeah, makes her way through Getting the Getting through really quickly. It was a little, uh, yeah, sketchy with her arms, but uh, nothing serious. And Marion just coming off a win at the uh, Verbier Freeride Week. Took the top spot in all three of the mini contests over the course of the weeks. And head judge, or one of our judges basically, and uh, all around snowboard legend, Bertie Denervo sums it up very succinctly she rips she does <laughs> Doing unfortunately a bit of now right she had a little hesitation at the top but she proved why she was going for a really nice section enjoying it hands up in the air oh no we see that's not what we wanted to see even though it's at the end of the run that is a complete lack of control yes oh she was celebrating too early that's a bummer, but uh, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, let's see what the judges will, how they handle that issue. But for sure, she put her name out there. That top section was really impressive. The body language really showed that she's motivated. She's loving it. Yeah. And still a big smile. And a big smile, that's exactly it. Well, there we go. Green in all categories except for lack of control, as we saw there at the bottom, and one slight hiccup mid-face as well. But the judges liking everything else they saw. And uh, Marion, as you can see from the smile on her face. Uh, Here we have the bottom air. Uh, Beautiful. Lands perfect. And she's not finished with that. Straight into another one with full speed. All of control. And uh, here she gets the bump. She, That's it. She, she didn't lay down. She was uh, <laughs> kind of kicked out. With that yeah. little, well, let's see, what the, let's see what the score comes in at. 65 points, not the end of the world. No, nope. because she pushed her score a lot with her run. I said she was hesitating a little bit getting into the bo bottom part, but she proved that she was uh, lining up something really nice. And... Uh, here we have 65 points. Is not bad at all. No, not bad at all. Okay, sure. Event wild card. The 34-year-old out of Norway. You must have commentated some of her runs in the past. Oh yes, over indeed. Many because, years. Cher uh, Stibois, a very accomplished freestyle snowboarder on the uh, Ticket to Ride World Snowboard Tour, and now uh, turning, setting her sights on the Freeride World Tour. 
she just uh, sent you an email and said, you know what, Ooh, I'm gonna do a little bit of free riding. You guys got a spot for me? And they said yes, and a good thing too. She's never competed in free ride competitions, but she uh, has done quite a bit of free riding and uh, filming off-piste in the backcountry around the world. And uh, once again, uh, a very, very strong freestyler, so she has great technique on snow. She is out of Norway, and as you know, all of the uh, Scandinavians put skis or snowboards under them, and <laughs> there's usually lots of talent. And here we have her going all the way to the skier's left into a really part that is has a lot of good snow in it. She's uh, always trying to get in that little spray turns, getting into the white room. That's what the judges want to see. That was maybe a little bit too much of a white room. She spinned out, but followed by two ah, butter threes. Yes, both directions. Freestyle, what she's there definitely uh, yeah, she known for. Can't throw a 360 in the half pipe here by Nora Arcali, so she's gone for the 360 butter spins. And speaking of the half pipe. First run of Kirsty. Yeah, Kirsty Bois. Great thing to see. Former <laughs> uh, Olympic medalist, took home a bronze in Torino in 2006. There we go, so line, fluidity, judges liked it. Technique, knocking, knocked back a tiny bit for uh, Aaron Style, or not gaining points on Aaron Style and control, but there you go, smiling as well. Oh, and she's got Good, the mouth guard in there run. too, yeah. She must be stoked. Welcome to the tour, Shirsty. Nice to have you. And 50 points. Second position currently, yeah, I'll take that. Whoop, whoop. Yep. All right, good to see Sherstie Bois. It was nice to uh, to hear from her why she came on tour. She she wanted to, yeah, to experience the whole full spectrum of snowboarding, and she probably explored uh, freestyling to the max, which she still is. And she's not gone from sn uh, from freestyle no. snowboarding, but she opens up the spectrum into the free ride world tour. There we go. Great to have her on board. And another lady who knows a little bit about freestyle. Definitely, as well. she is. You could tell her, uh, call her a legend already. Uh, also coming from the freestyle world, Good gaining her Marxer. big name in um, snowboard movies, showing parts that some uh, man would love to have. Yes, indeed. And uh, with us on the Freeride World Tour since a few years already. Yep, 2011 world champ. Proving in the first year, I think it was, that she is deserving that spot here on the tour with a wild card, yes, gaining indeed. the title, going for another one for this season. Yeah. Always motivated, always charging. You can see going through that really tight section in that technical spot, really fluid. There was not really an air in it yet, but it was technical to ride with a lot of fluidity. Now in the mid section, which is a little flatter, also going to the skier's left side of that venue at the bottom, where the snow in this couloir is really good to ride. They love enjoying good snow. Dropping in from the furthest on top, getting a lot of speed. Come on, oh, and there we go, Catching once again. A rock. Just can't Such see a those, shame. yeah, can't see those rocks, but the same thing that happened to uh, dude Charlet, what you think is an open powder, powder-filled couloir just isn't. Well, there's lots of powder, but unfortunately there's not enough of it. So Anne Floor, though, nerves of steel, just uh, you know, throwing down some carves as she makes her way down to the finish line. Unfortunately, that will go into a uh, lack of control. Yeah, that definitely will bump her down a bit. Although it was a good line, We'll see about what the judges criteria. As oh. I said, line was really good. Yeah, and but as you the mentioned rest as well, not a, not a whole lot of air either. So yep. in lack of control and technique, maybe a tiny bit harsh. I think Anne Floor has great technique, <laughs> yeah. but maybe a little bit lacking in that run. Yeah. So she finished up in fourth here in Andorra last year, and well, you know. 
halfway smiling, but a little yeah. bit frustrated as well. A goggle full of uh, snow is not the best sign in the bottom finish no, line. Because Anne Floor, she's another, she's a serious competitor. And actually so serious that, you know, she took a little break on tour. And you know why? It's because there wasn't enough prize money. And she waited to come back until they raised the prize money for the women. And they threw Alaska on tour too, so two motivations. LA, our reigning world champ, dropping in now. Yes, she is three years in the making on the world tour. Came on tour as a rookie from the world, from the qualifier series and proved from the first day that she is the prodigy or the future of snowboarding, competitive snowboarding. And s straight in the second season, she walked away with the title. Getting into that crusty part. Didn't see a lot of air yet, but fluid riding. A lot of control. She's also a very proficient skier as well. Um, Is she? Yeah. In two, I, I asked about that because she's actually listed on the Freeride World Tour website as participating in the ski and snowboard categories. And uh, apparently at one point she had intended on doing that. And then since she did so well in snowboarding, she decided that uh, she'd just stick to the snowboard. Here we go. She's going to the lower part with a completely new aspect of the face with full speed. You saw she was first track into that little couloir. A tiny shoot. Yeah, Beautiful line slash. selection. All right. You can see out of this, you can see already that she, over those last two, three years, she gained a lot, a lot of, of confidence, confidence oh, and experience. Yes. And 21 years young. <laughs> you see that ballet. tiny shoot at the bottom. Like the top part didn't set her apart of the others, but the bottom part really showed her skills. Well, there we go. Loving Andorra. She won the event here last year. And am I going out on a limb to say that she's probably moved herself into contention to win the event <laughs> this year as well? Uh, definitely, like, yeah, that, that is. That is a good sign. Okay, so potentially there was no taking over the hot seat. To be fair with you, if, uh, what's your name again? The first out of the gate? I'm sorry with the new names. No, 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 that's okay. That, uh, that was Marion Erti and Estelle Ballet. There we go, 70 points. Yeah. And she takes over the hot seat. That's great. Here on the Swatch Freeride World Tour by Nord Arkelis, stop number one of five. No so. big surprise though, but still, you have to do it. You have to get down the mountain exactly in that it. fashion. So big hugs from her compatriot. Big hugs all around. Okay. But still big props to Marion, because if she wouldn't have that crash, I'm pretty sure she would be still sitting in that seat. Ah, uh, there's a very good, very good possibility of that. Okay, next up. Tour rookie out of Canada, Michelle Locke of Banff. Finished first in the uh, qualifiers for her ticket on tour. Also going to the skier's right side, if you've seen all the girls yet. And Michelle had one win in Crested Butte, Colorado last little year. Little air on top here. With control, fluidity is not all the way up, but uh, it's her first run on the Freeride World Tour Circus, so we cannot blame her at all. Here, finding some more dry snow. You can see the spray in the air. That's what the riders are looking for. Navigating through that middle section, flat part, quite a few rocks hidden underneath. So choose your line well. It's the credo at this uh, this level, leading up to the bottom part, cruising through the pow. By now, it's quite easy to find with all those tracks yeah. leading there. But she is trying to find a unique way through that rocky garden. Trying to avoid jumping her way out of trouble. 
Will we see another feature or air? She would need to have that in her line. Otherwise, she's missing a lot of air and style. There's another one. Well, I think Not we too saw big, but I'm pretty the, uh, sure she wants to play it safe yeah, for the first run of her season. That's exactly That's it. fair enough. As we saw from a few of the, the male rookies in the snowboard category, stay on your feet, get a result, and, uh, and build momentum for Chamonix and Feverbrun. Here we see again one of the most obvious lines we've seen from the men and the women so far. Although we have seen some snowboard girls really going for it on the skier's left side. Fast turns through those one open couloir like a Madame Marcer and uh, the very tiny shoot that we've seen from uh, the reigning world champion Estelle Ballet. Estelle Ballet. Maybe here just a quick reminder for everyone again. Take the chance, Facebook, Freeride World Tour page, hashtag AskFWTRiders. Put your question in there, put the hashtag, and it will uh, pop up with the riders to ask from Michel. Michel. There we go. And so Mike is down in the. Uh, Speaking of hashtag Ask FWT Riders, Mike is down in the finish area with Estelle Ballet. Take it away, Mike. Uh, sorry. No. Uh. Be 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 before we go there, we might see a score. I, I thought we saw the score. Ju judges. Okay. Judges probably so still discussing. For the score. And then we'll pass it over to Mike. Sorry. But Michele about that. has a. Uh, Michele. Michelle. Michelle has a, a smile on her face. That's that's a good thing. Okay. okay we're we'll take it over to Mike, who's with Estelle Ballet. Hey, well, welcome down to the finish. This is Mike. I'm here with Estelle Ballet. She has been styling it today. We've got a few questions. We've got a few questions here from online. One is from Sasha in Canada. Estelle, do you have a lucky charm you always have with you while you compete? That it sucks. No, I mean, it, it's right here. It's a ring. My godmother bought me when I was about 10 years old. And yeah, always with me. Ah, very nice, very nice. We also have one from Dave. One from Dave in Scotland. How do you train in the summertime? A lot of fitness. A lot of strength and um, yeah, a lot of time at the gym, to be honest. And otherwise, I just love hiking, so I do a lot of hiking in the mountains during the summer too. Okay. So. Well, it certainly paid off today. Looks like it paid off for the moment. It's not over yet. <laughs> exactly. The hot seat. You want me to turn the heat up a little bit on the hot seat down here? We got a regulation here. Yeah. yeah there we go. We'll crank it up a little bit. Crank the champagne, hopefully, and we'll just see how this all turns out. But uh, so good, so far. And uh, tell me just a little bit about the snow conditions up there and how, how you dealt with the crust on the top. So yeah, first half is very, very crusty. So I had to change my line. Uh, I wanted to take a line uh, on the, 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 the couloir straight under the beaten part to start. And I had to change it because the snow conditions were too, too hot. And um, well, I'm happy I changed it because I, I could, yeah, uh, pick a line a little bit more playful. And then I had really good snow in the in the couloir, but um, yeah, I missed a couple of jumps. That's my only only problem. Write it down. Okay, great, Estelle. Back to you. Back to you guys. Back up at the uh, speakers. Thank you very much. Here we're back. Thanks, Mike, for that. And again, shout out. Go on Facebook. The Freeride World Tour page and put your question, hashtag ask, ask FWT, FWT riders. riders. <laughs> okay, and speaking of the FWT Riders, next up in the starting gate is our 2013 world champ, Elodie Mouton. And what did Elodie do here last year? She finished second. Elodie, the 28-year-old, 
out of Albi sur Cheron, a small medieval village in the Ancy region of France, and she's off and riding. Here we go with an air to open up the the run. Not perfect control in the landing though, but trying to make the best of it. That's what uh, Estelle was explaining, that there is quite some crust still uh, on top, and that's what, what she just experienced with her nose digging into the crust, sending her forward into a small tumble. Into the same couloir as uh, Anne Flor. We just seen her shooting through there. Well, staying on her feet for right now, the most important thing. LED didn't have uh, that much riding time. She was working a lot. I think she's a physio, is that correct? Or teacher? She's, a, she's actually going to law school. Or she's no, she's a, a lawyer. She's a lawyer. <laughs> she is a lawyer. Oh, sorry for that. Like I said, quite a few of the uh, free riders on tour are not full-time sponsored athletes. Uh, many of them have second careers, like Sasha Ham, and in this case, Elodie Mouton. Conditions in the Alps were not ideal before Christmas, so she didn't have that much time on the snowboard, she explained yesterday to me. But she's always a rider to look out for. And throughout the season, I'm sure she's going to be stepping up her game. Well, she did have three podium finishes last year. And I'm sure that uh, we'll be seeing her on a podium again at some point on this 2016 Swatch Freeride World Tour. Potentially not today, especially with that head over heels. Yeah, that definitely didn't push her score. That and did vice not versa. Help things it out at bumped all it down for Elodie Mouton. Here we have her at the finish line, probably not the most satisfied about his, her run. She was winning events, winning world titles, so she's used to end up on the top of a, of a podium. That's what she tried for sure, but uh, this time it didn't work out. That she crash at the top really had a big effect on her score. And on the rest of her run. So in now, there's your standings. Check it out, Ballet Erti Bois in the top three spots. And this is our last run of the women's snowboarding. Michaela Holsten out of Finland, uh, who won the Freeride World Qualifiers for the uh, Europe Oceania region. And here she is in her first run on the Freeride World Tour. Staying on her feet. Solid so far. Nothing in the uh, air and style category, but linking turns. Yep, and she's continuing to do that. Unfortunately, not hitting any airs yet. That's what the judges want to see. Spice it up a little bit with uh, attractive uh, features. She's popping up again on that flat part. Will we see her going off that little ridge? We might Let's see a so. first air. We do. Oh, nice little drop there. A little hesitation just before. She's playing it safe, easy cruising. Doesn't want to mess it up on her first appearance on the Freeride World Tour. But if she wants to finish on the podium, she might have to throw in something a little bit more spectacular down the bottom here. Once again, getting into the steep couloir in the middle of the face at the bottom. See how quickly she will appear again. Here she is, where we see another air. Yes, small one at the bottom. Everything under control, no issues on that side. Fluidity is not to the max and lacking air and style, so it will not be a top score in my eyes. Well, if she wants to move on to the podium, she has to get score higher than 50 points. That's what yeah. Cherski Bois scored. And this so will be tough for her for the first event, but she's down. She will have a good result.
good for opening a season. By the way, when you see that red line and it's uh, interrupted, it's not going through, it doesn't mean that this was a jump. <laughs> that would, would that have been, been a, a pretty big, big one. jump, huh? <laughs> this means that it, uh, she uh, or he disappeared from the judge's eyes. This also means that the judges are not scoring what they can't see, of course, but they can only assume how fast riders are coming out into the visible area again, how fast they have been in between. But if there was a jump in between, they cannot tell. But here we go. Okay, well, there we go, 53.25. So pumped up, good enough pumped to up to the podium. Congratulations. So there we go. Her first run on tour puts her into third position and a podium finish. So that uh, makes it Estelle Ballet, our reigning world champion, finishes first, followed by Marion Erti and uh, Michaela Holsten. So an injury replacement tour wild card takes second, and one of our and a true tour rookie finishing up third. Here on the Swatch Free Ride World Tour coming up in Chamonix Mont Blanc. Coming up here though, next in by Nord Arcalis will be our uh, women's skiers in just a few moments. Okay, and let's have a look at the uh, ski women to watch out for. Our reigning world champ, of course, out of Austria, Ava Valkner. Ava, of course, had a spectacular year on tour last year. Pretty much won everything. Sylvia Moser, out of Italy, was very impressive as well. And Hazel Josie Birnbaum. And of course, Nadine Valner, another former world champ. Back from injury, as you can see there. Very intense look on her face. She is a seasoned competitor. And we will definitely be keeping an eye on her. Checking out our Mally Noyes, Evelina Nilsson, Hazel Birnbaum, Lawton Rapp, Sylvia Moser, Ava Wachner, Francesca Taviard Kane, Ariana Chicobi, Laura Lay Torres out of Andorra, Matilda Rappaport, actually I thought was not starting, but that may have changed. Lorraine Huber and Christine Hargan, or Christine Hargan, who was not starting. Either way, we'll see <coughs> as we go along. We're ready to get things going here in the women's ski category. Okay, Lauren Cameron. Next rider, team number two, Jackie Passo. Uh, no, Jackie Passo. Five, four, will be three, our first lady in. Two, one, drop in. All right, off and riding. All right. Jackie Passo opening the women's category, already with a jump at the top. Super motivated for this season, I'm sure. And as we know her, going big into the crowd. Little back seat, but not no back slash. No, it's all good. She definitely uh, no back slapping, no leaving bomb holes. Yep. And very, very, very solid, solid start for for Jackie. That's how you know her. Yes, if indeed. she's happy with some snow and day condition, then she can go big, and she's always a threat to the podium. Well, she had her best result on tour here last year, fourth place finish. Last season was not the best for her. No, not at all. She had already, I don't know, is it five or six seasons on the Freeride World Tour? To go back, she's it, been it on tour. She finished, uh, well, since 2010, she finished third. So <laughs> she's had, uh, this is her sixth season I on tour. I think I remember a huge year. Was it 2009? 
nine in uh, Squaw Valley, where she hit actually the biggest air of the whole competition. Another air in her bottom part of the this year's edition of the Valnora Kalis freeride event. And another little air at the bottom, speeding out into the open field. All right, that well was her opening run for Fast and Furious from Jackie Paso, yeah, no doubt. That was 2010 in Squaw was it? Valley. Yes. Ah, thank you. For Where correction. she won the event, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jackie Paso, absolutely ripping it. Have a look at that line. It's kind of the uh, the center, uh, straight down the center, with some big features in there. So Jackie Paso starting things off well here in Andorra. You can see Aaron Style boosted up because of that top air that she did. It was really some time in the air. We saw it from the perspective of the heli, so uh, it was a little hard to tell how big it was, but by the seconds she spent in the air, it was pretty big. 70 points. A great score also to calibrate. She is definitely now a reference who wants to win or get to the podium. You have Jackie. to get past Jackie Paso. Jackie Paso, no doubt. Well, Nadine Wallner, never afraid of a good challenge, will be. Nadine Wallner in the start gate, opening up her 2016 season. She is back. She had a full year with no competition, no riding. She had an awful accident the season before in the filming session in Alaska. It was quite a fight back and she has the, the strength, mental and physical strength to come back from such an injury. So she, what we'll see is a test run as well. How can she cope with those conditions again? Well, she's coping she's, pretty uh, well for now. Absolutely, <laughs> as we know her, riding strong in difficult terrain And, but this, we have to know, is a warm-up phase for her. She will probably not risk everything on the first event. She has to get into the m momentum again, building up confidence. A huge injury is a big impact on, a, on an athlete. Even for a two-time world champ. Yes. I hope she doesn't put too much pressure on herself, because she knows she has the two titles. Everyone expects big things from her coming back on tour. She really has nothing less left to prove. The mountains are my playgrounds, she says, and really playing with the face here. And here we go. Negra today. She's heading to the far skiers left and into a really steep shoot that Flo Early and uh, Emilien Badou, for example, took at the snowboarders' men's side. So nothing to prove, but she wants to put the pressure on herself. Yeah, I can, I'm not surprised. She's going full on from the very early start with a big air. All right, absolutely Little perfect. Little backseat, but yeah. perfect execution at the bottom. Rides Loving speed, it. She's stoked, claiming it, as you would. Yes. Ah, oh, that boosts her confidence so high. No doubt. <laughs> big time, big props. All right, way to, to go, Nadine, Nadine Valner. Valner. Welcome back. Yes. All right, Nadine, Nadine Valner. Once again, the mountains are her playground, and wow, she sure had fun on the mountain here today. The top part in the crust, I'm pretty sure she didn't like that at all. Um, uh, She's a strong rider, so she can cope with that for sure. But the bottom part was definitely m more her piece of cake with uh, the leg that she has, with the injury that she had. Soft as snow at the bottom, so I'm not surprised that she took some big air. And sh yeah, it's I want to see that. Uh, Look at the smile on her face, there you go. We will Woo! see that. She can't believe it, moment of truth. 64.5, so um, second position. I'm a little surprised, but I uh, would like to see the, the replay because I guess that her landing was not very clean, although it was really spectacular. But uh, she must have got deducted by, uh, by the landing. Okay, while we're waiting for our next rider to drop in, we're going to throw back up to the 
Davide at the start, who is there with uh, Ava. Okay, I'm here with Ava, Ava Walker. As you can see, it's quite rocky out there. Ava, how do you avoid the rocks? Oh, well, it's a pretty tough place for us. So I choose my line. Uh, like, I try to go in more in the couloirs. I try to jump the stuff for no rocks below the, the, the jumps. It, it was really, really tough to find a good line for me, but yeah, I hope, I hope I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, I hope substitute back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Davide, and uh, thank you very much, Ava. Always a pleasure to hear from our rain. Uh, this, though, is Evelina Nilsson out of Sweden taking the second place in the Freeride World Qualifying European region. That's how she's made her way on the tour. Don't know uh, much more about the uh, Swedish rookie, but she's going to show Heard us good her things stuff about right it. Here. And yeah. she's showing that she uh, is well deserved from the first, first few turns out of the gate. You can see strong rider with stomp legs. She knows what it takes to get a good score. Mixing it up with fast turns, solid technique. It's good to see oh. some fresh, fresh faces on tour. No nice doubt. air at the bottom. That was a really good top section, I must say. Now getting into the more mellow part, the connecting flat section in the middle. The snow getting way better. No crust anymore. As we've seen at the beginning, where you saw the whole face, it's uh, changing from uh, south to southeast to northeast even. That's why the snow is getting way better and more dry at the bottom. Another air, yeah. and not a small one at all, into a high-speed turn. No. Not a little ollie. Very, very impressive. Pretty good day for the Swedish rookies. If uh, she has the same luck as Christopher Granbaum, she could finish on the podium. Exactly, like I'm really impressed. That was a strong run from out top of, to bottom. Out of Ore Sweden. She ticked all the boxes. Speed, fluidity, line choice, of course, was not the most original at the bottom. We can see a lot of riders choosing that line on the skiers' right. But uh, she made it up with uh, speed and uh, yeah, technique, as there I just go. said. Yep, very fluid, very technical. Surprised uh, we didn't see a little green in the air in style and there. Very confident. Her body yeah. language says it all. She, she was still within her limits. Oh, yeah. Very Good. solid riding. I think we're going to see even more c uh, this coming season of Evelina. Yes, indeed. Her first run, 66.75. <laughs> Puts her in front of our reigning world champion. Oh, no, sorry, no, no, maybe that was Nadine Valner. <laughs> yeah. Valner, Wachner, excuse me. <laughs> Get those two mixed up sometimes. Only one letter difference. Jackie Paso still in the top spot in the hot seat with her huge air in the top section, really separated her apart from any other one. As I said, the, the image was from the heli when we saw her jumping, so it must have been even bigger than we thought it was. Okay, reigning event champion is Hazel Birnbaum on course now, finished up world number three. Very, very solid young skier out of the United States of America. Very powerful woman, solid on her skis, as you just said. And she proved her, her great season or great skiing and riding technique in Verbier with an amazing double. Yep. She has the we would call it, if she were a boy, <laughs> the balls to <laughs> go big and technical. She's got guts. Guts, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, two wins on tour last year. One here in Bainor Arcalis in Andorra, and the second one at uh, the season finale at the uh, Extreme Verbier in Switzerland on the Bec de Ros. Here it's on the Bacera Negra today. And Hazel. Yes. We've seen the same line as Nadine Valner take at the, the top part. Unfortunately, there is not much air to do 
take up there, but it's very technical and steep. Here she comes also into the same section as Nadine with that mandatory air leading out of it. Let's see how fluid she can pass that section to the air. This is quite important that it's not only about the air, it's really about how to get there. Get in there, yeah. Hesitation and fluidity is a big part of the judging. And she's heading, yeah, not taking bad. it on a smaller spot, playing it a little safe but definitely with control that was the issue with Nadine she took it bigger and faster but uh, or more fluid yeah. but uh, I couldn't spot it perfectly from the angle we had but uh, I think she was a little backseat or a little bit of a control issue in the landing from Nadine so that's why she was not bumped up higher in her score here we have the line the of line. Uh, Hazel once again only in her second year on tour so she is one to watch out for there we go well the line judges kind of eh, otherwise more or less green we'll see what the, where she comes in at in the standings what the judges actually thought of the score hazel there as you can see by the look on her face not terribly impressed with her performance She knows she can do better than that. Very hard on herself. Once again, finishing up third in the world in her first year on tour. And 56.75, fourth place finish here. Obviously disappointing for our reigning event champion. And current world number three. Back up to the top for our next rider in. Lawton Rapp out of Hagluf's Sweden. She already showed last season that she's really a skier to watch out for. She can go pretty big. She really also has the guts no doubt. to One go fast and big. One event win last year in Fieberbrunn. Did not do so well here in uh, Bainor last year. Finishing up in ninth position. And ready to drop in is Lothen Rapp. Starting with the uh, air at the top, you can see it's already pretty tracked out into the crud. Another small air there into full speed arcing turns. Getting around the, the crucial parts, but with full speed. Let's see uh, what the judges will, how com they compare it to the others that went through the more crucial parts, but with less speed. And to what point is speed a deciding factor? It's a uh, comes down to fluidity so in a more open terrain you have to Go ride fast. faster yeah. than someone in a more technical terrain um, that can ride less fast but is the same that. fluidity points so it's always compared to the terrain you're riding in here we have her trying to get as fluid through that bottom section and luckily the air was not as big as the judges would love to see it so she will be lacking some air and style points for sure. Speed will be up there. Fluidity will be definitely up there with the others. But there is some more to be ticked. Those boxes are lacking a little bit. And she knows that. She has been coming on tour strong. She knows what it's all about. It was not a big of a learning phase. She proved that she knows from the beginning. No, definitely. She requalified first year on tour. Once again, finished up last year in sixth position with one win in her rookie season. So she knows what it takes to win, but does not always put it all together and doesn't look like she's done it this time. Where will she be in the standings? Currently in the fourth position with 61.75 points. And she will leave her spot. The next lady to drop in, going over and Jackie Passo still Jackie in the number one spot. Hug, exactly. With a huge air at the top. A 
as we get ready for Sylvia Moser. Next rider, it has definitely also the the caliber to take over that hot seat. Oh yes, second in the world in she her rookie seat. No. Oh no, it's not Sylvia, it's, ah, okay. uh, it's Eva Wagner. Wagner. There we go. The reigning world champion, big smile on her face, starting with the air, very solid, very experienced rider. Finished long, long time ago, she's been racing in World Cup races in the Alpine category before changing over to the free ride, appearing in movie segments and uh, focusing on the free ride world tour for some years now with a really big win last, last season. season. Actually coming back from an injury. injury, in her comeback season, she proved that she did some really good work in her physio. Definitely in her, f in her rehab. Yeah. And yeah, basically came back, won the first event on tour in Chamonix and uh, top spot in the rankings and did not lose that top spot. Never moved out of first place the entire season. Also looking for original line at the bottom. This tight section here with fresh snow. No one was in there before. Don't get caught on the rocks, oh, but she's doing well. Doing really well, nice air at the bottom. Opening up a new line in that bottom section. That's what also the judges want to see. Don't follow the tracks all the time. Be creative, do your own thing. What was that? I don't know, it was a little... Was it angry <laughs> or was it happy? That's <laughs> a good question. I, I kind of Could have think, been both. I think it was a little bit of frustration, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I think she passed a segment or a feature. She missed the feature that she wanted to do, for yeah. sure. Now, what feature that was, <laughs> I have no idea, but... That's definitely what the body language was telling us. Yeah, she's very competitive, so uh, she loves winning. Yes, she does. And she hates she's losing. Not a world champion. <laughs> but and, and she, she has that in common with many <laughs> others. <laughs> yeah, so. that's exactly it. You're not a world champ for nothing. Anyway, she's got a smile on her face now. She finished second here in Andorra last year. She'd like to be on the podium again. And there you go, back into the number two spot with a little less than half the field left to come. So there's some very talented riders um, still uh, still to come here on the mountain. And Ava Wachner has put on a good show. She would have liked to have done a little bit better, but that's all right. She's going to sit down next to Jackie and uh, wait to see how the podium plays out. As we move farther down the field, there we go, Francesca Paviard Kane. Another really solid skier, powerful woman. We have seen her stomping cliffs that we normally only used from from the boys. That's right, getting on, getting her jump on in and Crested I'm Butte, Colorado. That's her home home resort. Going over to the far skier's right. She opened up with a small jump. Going all the way to the skier's right. I'm a little surprised to ski around that, those features. I would have seen her going into those. We saw the same line showed by uh, Lotten Rapp, although she was a little faster. That's what you have to do. If you're not hitting any features, you have to be skiing faster than the others. So. Uh, this, this didn't push her score. No. Nice little drop in the flat part here. It's a bit surprising. She's not usually one to play it safe either. So. Absolutely not. <laughs> Two podium finishes last year here in Andorra. She finished third. And a third place finish in Haynes, Alaska. Okay, what she got for us here. She has to step up the, her game. She can. But we're not seeing it today. No, nope. just not feeling it. She's not feeling it. No, it's it's, it's uh, fully fair. If you're, if you're not feeling it, don't go for it. No, that's exactly um, That's it. a don't golden false. rule in yeah, free riding. Stay on your feet. This was nicely done, although not very fluid getting into it. Like we've seen better already from some other ladies. Um, but we also know that Francesca can do better. So uh, No, for sure. But... Having she's said that, her worst critic. She starts. She starts her seasons slow. Um, 
11th True. place and 12th place in 2015 uh, and 14, respectively. And then she kind of builds momentum from there. So maybe that's her general tactics. Yeah, that I mean that could just be the way things play out for Francesca. We'll see if uh, if that comes true this season. But uh, always expect to see her on the podium. And yeah, the judge is not terribly impressed either. That's okay. She's still got a smile on her face. All good. First round of the season. Getting the cobwebs out, as we say. <laughs> yeah. Cleaning house in her head. And uh, the body getting a feel for uh, for the snow as well. 52.25, so seventh place currently. Not really <coughs> where she wanted to be. So Jackie Paso, so Ava Wagner. Seven Vachner, people, or seven girls down, down the mountain, mountain yet. And Ariana Tricobi should be our next starter. Nope, Lorelei Torres. <laughs> She's the local lady. Lorelei Torres. Event wild Ooh, card. Going into a new section. Coming in from the skiers left into that shoot that we've seen Hazel Fernbaum and Nadine Valna go. 25 years old, and she is the local. This is her home mountain. So if the, anybody's going to show us an original, unique line, uh, it's Lorelei Torres. Finished seventh here last year. She'd like a spot on the podium and riding for the home crowd. Definitely talented enough to do it. So the top part, we didn't see any air, although this was really tough to do in, in that spot. We've seen also Hazel Birnbaum and Nadine Wallner well, not catching any air in that segment. Uh, what she's doing right now is, is not favor. lack of fluidity. <laughs> yes, correct, Dave. Um, you have to choose your line well and try to avoid what we just saw. Stepping upwards and losing your speed completely she had to cross over to get into that other section because she didn't want to go all the way skiers left. Now we are at that main chute Back at, at the it. bottom where we've seen Anfleur Marxer and Kirsty go down. You see some bomb hole, that dark part spot, the oh, issue yeah. of control and a tumble. Okay, and well, she's still got a Still ski got her skis. Way. I hope she's okay. That yeah. was quite a crash. No, yeah, she's all but right. The, she's the snow is very soft at the bottom. You can see actually perfect pow. And Lorelei Torres. Well, I'd be a bit disappointed. Event wild card for the second year in a row here in Andorra. And feeling the pressure, who knows, but either way, another unfortunate finish for the young lady from Andorra. On the way to the finish line, for sure she's bumped in her hometown, not going down, or not coming down the mountain without a crash. That's always a bummer, but. Uh, and as you can see, uh, lost from the judge's view for quite a while there, but they figured out what she was doing. That was where yep. she was traversing back up the mountain. That's the thing, even that the judges maybe not have seen her live through the binoculars, as she took ages to be reappearing, they had to reduce her even already then for the fluidity. And uh, of course, at the bottom with the lack of control. But she has a smile on her face. She will be parting with us. Yes, indeed. Celebrating the first edition or the first event of the season. Of the season first run of the competitive season as well. And now we have, there we go. Really, Childa really strong competitor. Rappaport. From the first year, from the first event of the Freeride World Tour, of her Freeride World Tour appearance, she was always a threat to podium and more. And Matilda, Matilda Rappaport out of Engelberg, Sweden, injured last year, granted a tour wild card. She is back with us. Here in Andorra. And, uh, Opening up with a jump at the top. She knows how the business works. She had even uh, a little wild, a wild card in 
Verbier, the first year she competed, where she was, she was still on the Freeward World Qualifiers, and what she did, she, she won. won the event. <laughs> that was in 2013. Yes, Oops, don't did. get caught Oy. up. Yep, setting up for another jump. With some new pair of skis on her feet. A little shorter, I think they fit her well. Shows her riding style. She adapted to it. Getting into the more soft part of the, the venue. I'm sure her boyfriend is watching closely, which is Matthias Hargin. We've seen him in the Verbier Extreme of last season. And he will have the slalom event of Kitzbühel coming up this Sunday. So he has some days off watching his girl ski. And she's doing well. Yes, we is. know she can show some really big air and air. a lot of speed in her riding. Besides I hope to do we, it there, though. Yes, we hope we're going to see some more like that. But she was missing some features again. So I, I don't expect to have that into the very high scores. But it will be a score, and she... No, she'll be happy just to make it from top to bottom. I think a lot of the ladies, um, this first event, they're really just kind of using it as a warm up. They know they've got two more events to really give it their all. I think, yeah, make and the that, that Alaska. definitely, uh, definitely is the point for of uh, Matilda. She doesn't. We had three events last season, yeah, and she's always a, a contender to the podium, but she had quite some struggles and was not going with us to or was she no she was no she was injured correct no, she was injured last year unless my stat sheets are wrong mm. anyway she had some struggles in the first part of the season last year and i guess she wanted to bring down a result today she didn't go for the win with this kind of line and with the heavy competition, the only finishes in seventh position. And back to the top. Who is next into the Stargate? Another big caliber. I'm going to wait till they show us the rider at the Stargate. This is uh, Lorraine Huber. There we go. Fully motivated yes, from indeed. Alberg Lechzer's local. Luckily, we got some really good snow the last two weeks. It's also my home resort, and we got some really good days in in the mountains. She's ready for Fired it. Up. Another free world to season, starting really strong with the air, perfect landing. You can see her body language. The yes. big air landing close to the rocks, not hesitating or not being disturbed at all. That's what we want to see. Strong riding, confidence. Finishing that top part with another air. Not landing oh, on rocks, on I wanted rocks. to say. Ah. Well, that's a big shame. That was a winning. That could have been a winning run. Like that's a winning exactly run. It. I mean, she was going for the win for sure. And she was in a good way, but this was just uh, stuff happens. Send down the bucket, the bin. <laughs> Throw it straight in the bin. Oh, Lorraine, we feel for you. Because she was quite charging. Risky, yeah. yeah. She, on that last air, she really got so close to the rocks. She already had a close call on the first big air like this one. Have a look. She actually landed, landed with her rocks, tails yes. on the rocks, but her big impact was and here and again with the tails but this time the tails actually uh, got snapped got to the snapped, front yeah. and uh, that sent her into the tumble well but we can see her climbing up by herself she is in one piece nothing hurts at, at least it looks like it and uh, she will be back for the next event and try again All right. well play with fire you get burned as the saying goes we have three events before the cut maybe we can explain that a little bit yeah once uh, again. there will be only two out of three in uh, um, taking there is there is one results score that, that can that's right three results only the the top two results count for the the mid-season cut before uh, basically which determines who qualifies 
to go to Alaska and re-qualifies for next year's Swatch Free Ride World Tour. And then after Alaska, there's another cut to see who goes to uh, the season finale at the uh, Extreme Verbier in Switzerland, which is the event that started this whole thing 21 years ago now for the Verbier for the Extreme Verbier. And uh, the Freeride World Tour happening, of course, since 2008. Here we see Lorraine finishing her run, the bottom section, with really good snow. It's hard to say if she enjoys those turns, but uh, no, she's, uh, she is, the riding uh, is nice at least. Yeah, Because exactly. she just had a crash. The top part was amazingly well skied. She was, in my eyes, on the way to the podium and more. Yeah, Jackie Paso, happy to hold on to the hot seat, but upset to uh, see a big bail like that. That's not how you want to win, you know? No. Nope. You want to you win because you've really thrown down the best line. And she kind of knows that, that uh, Lorraine could have knocked her off the hot seat. But there you go. You but that's a part of the game. You have, exactly to it. you have to stick your tricks. And, yep. uh, you know, she took the Stay big risks. Stay on your feet until the and finish it, line. And it didn't pay. Yes, indeed. Second in the Americas region. Starting with that air that we've seen most of the girls took, but without hesitation, good landing. The light is coming back into the face. Which is good to see. The clouds were yep. threatening there for a little bit, but looks good now. Out of Whistler Blackcomb, British Columbia. So one of the Whistler girls, strong skier. Probably looking for the same jump as, yeah, a little smaller, but uh, same spot as we just seen Lorraine Huber take off. But uh, her fluidity is definitely not comparable to what we've seen from uh, Lorraine in the, in the previous year run. Her first appearance on the Freeride World Tour, definitely not intimidated, but she, the, you have respect coming here competing for the first time that's for sure with all the media attention with all the big buzz around such an event so here we see her coming in yep we see her coming into the lower part still not pushing her fluidity no, unfortunately that those seconds are crucial waiting until you drop Unless you're going for something really big, better not stop or hesitate. That's why those riders take a lot of time preparing their runs, memorizing their runs, Reminds. that they can go without hesitation, without stopping. That's what the judges want to see, full control and commitment. Because, of course, the riders are not allowed to ride the venue before the contest, but they do spend plenty of time up here on the mountain uh, scoping the line and, and riding the snow on similar facing uh, uh, slopes around, yeah. around the area. Very correct. It's a visual is inspection only. No one is allowed to ride the face except for me. <laughs> Lucky guy. <laughs> and a couple and the of guides. the guides. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, you're <laughs> not the only one. Good to be a, good to be a mountain guide on the Free Ride World Tour as well. Absolutely, the, we have some of the best in the world with us. We were seeing uh, the orange block was the fluidity part. Her final score puts her up into ninth position. So, with so that was her first experience on the Freeride World Tour. She will be back in Chamonix, and I'm pretty sure she will be bump up her a game better. a little bit. Yeah. We hope so. Yes. Okay, back up to the top. Another one of our tour rookies, Mally Noyes. Four, three, the US of a. two, one. Took the top spot in. in the Americas region. So, what do we have as a first impression of this young lady? Out of Alta, Utah, the western half of the US. We didn't see any air yet. First one coming up. Solid.
cruising down the bottom part here, or the bottom of the top part. Lining up for another feature, unfortunately not, no. just cruising through. Deciding to play it safe. Yep. But playing it At safe. the moment, very yeah. similar to what we've seen before. From the girl from Whistler. Now the middle section, not much happening there because there are not so many features to hit. Stay concentrated. Follow the tracks. And hopefully we'll see a little more original line that her score boosts. Because at the moment she's not in any anywhere top. No, the top two rookies podium. very, very similar riding styles and similar choice of lines from Lauren Cameron and Mally Noyce. Here comes an, the last that drop. Nice. That was nice. That might nice little finish. Might be the difference between the two. But same thing, need to gain experience on the Freeride World Tour. It is a different dimension than the qualifiers, although the qualifiers are a good They're preparation for the elite tour, but definitely with all the attention and media and the venues themselves, is it, it is a different ball game. No, that's for sure. But there are some challenging, uh, challenging venues on the Freeride World Qualifier. This actually, this event here used to be a four-star free ride world qualifier. So it just goes to show that some of the, uh, the qualifying events do take place in very challenging conditions here as we have a, another look at what happened up top. That was already the, the bottom part. Oh, the bottom, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, entering the, the bottom, bottom section of the mountain, yeah. As we wait for the scores to drop for Mali's first run on the Swatch Free Ride World Tour 2016. And 50.5 points in the 10th position. So our top three are still Jackie Passo, Ava Wachner, and Evelina Nilsson. The Swedish rookie rounding out the top three behind our reigning world champ. Here we have oh, Sylvia Moser, Moser. Yes. the rookie from last year, yep. proved that very impressive rookie. We have to have an eye on her. <laughs> Finished second in the world in her first year on tour. With a, an amazing win in Alaska, the first edition of the Freeride World Tour going to Alaska. She took the win. There were all eyes were on her back then. It's a new season, blank paper, new scores coming up. Some rookies and the usual suspects are at in the podium position at the moment. And that's definitely her goal to push them off. Oh, Let's see indeed. where she's heading. Well, she finished fifth here last year. That was her worst result on tour. She had three podium finishes, Chamonix, Haynes, and Verbier. Oh, and here we go, a completely new approach. <laughs> Skiing off the that's back of the mountain. Haven't yes. seen that yet today. Like last year in the Val Nord event, I remember well, she was crossing all the way to the skiers right and jumping a huge cliff. No one was expecting. Here we have the wind lip drop in, straight into some big arcing turns. She has a really solid technique, strong legs. She's an amazing slack liner, trains a lot on the slack line. That shows you the strength of her thighs and calves. Gonna get a little, uh, nice little jump there. So, with a lot of fluidity. Yep. In the fall line, except for that traverse over to the wind lip, but uh, that, I don't think the judges are gonna knock her for that. If we compare it to the top lines at the moment, we're missing a little bit of bigger airs. That was a nice one, but not too big. But the fluidity is up there, definitely. Let's hope she she can make it up at the bottom section because she wants to get all the way up to the podium. She's heading straight into there, no hesitation at all. She's disappearing for us and the judges. Appearing again. Is there a feature coming up? No, oh, actually just cruising down. It's a tiny, narrow couloir, but would yeah. have been good to, to nice couloir, mix good it up snow. with a jump. That's exactly it, that's what's lacking. So probably 
just off the podium for Sylvia Moser. We'll wait for the uh, official call from our judging panel. Once again, Evelina Nilsson out of Sweden, 66.75 points, is currently sitting in third. So if Sylvia Moser wants to uh, finish top three, that's the score she needs to beat. Let's see what the, the first uh, trend tendency is from the judges. Well, as we said, fluidity is really strong. All green. The missing of Aaron Style. It's neutral. If there is nothing, no left nothing or right. Nothing spectacular. That's not then, uh, exactly they just leave it as said. it is. And the line, well, the only original part was really to go get the wind lip up top. Other than that, it was pretty much it, it's happened. The judges having a little chat about it. Always a smiling face of Sylvia. Really happy camper. As long as she's out in the mountains and makes it uh, to the <laughs> to the bottom and in one piece, she's happy. That's for sure. Well, judges just we see Tom Bird, head judge, in the back discussing, coordinating with the video judge on the right hand side, Lola Bess. Curious, like we are for the score to come up. And here it is, the moment of truth. 60 points and sixth position. I think she yeah, The lack of Aaron style really bumped her score down. Fluidity was up there, all the way up there. I don't know exactly what appearing on that ridge. Like she, she had to cross over, go around that rock. You didn't see her in appearing. And the wind lip that she entered was not as spectacular as you wish you would see when they are disappearing and uh, yeah, yep. losing fluidity at the top. Exactly it. And our second Italian of the women skier to a rookie, Ariana Tricomi. From Alta Badia, Italy. She Another fresh face on the tour, starting with a nice jump, well executed, starting the momentum well. She looks like strong skier. It's the first impression that we have of th those rookies here. Yep. A little bit of a safety grab attempt. Very nice. Well, she won the uh, Europe Oceania Freeride World Qualifiers last year and showing us a bit of the uh, talent that she's got in her ski boots. You can see why she- Like uh, what I'm <laughs> seeing yeah, till definitely. now. So it's also the, the body language that you show, how confident you are, and the, the little tweak in here, a tra attempt to a Japan grab. She was not enough, she didn't have enough time in the air, but uh, the attempt was there. And that's what the judges want to see. It's not only because of the, the style and the, the spectacular move, it's also the confidence and the yeah, control that you show okay. if you do so. Here now we come. Into her last right part. Here. Luckily, it's a little grassy yeah. because that takeoff was lacking some snow. But she handled it well. Absolutely. And now it's a straight line to the finish. So that looks like a solid score yeah. for her first appearance on the Freeride World Tour. Ariana Tricobi. Well, solid score or not. That was, a, that was a great performance as we see her line. Look at that, that particular line looking very familiar now. Yep. And... Uh, Probably even more so once we move into the men's ski category. Although hopefully the, the men's skiers are gonna mix it up a little bit because there's plenty of competition in that category. 26 men to come down the mountain. There we go. Mariana Tsukomi. Definitely happy about her run. She yes, must indeed. be. Big smile. Ciao, Bella. Wants to podium and knock uh, her fellow rookie off of the podium, that's Evelina Nelson. There we go. Green Already good sign board. Yeah, to have everything in green. No doubt. So once again, 66.75.76 will put her on the podium. And uh, 70 points is the score to beat. That's Jackie Paso, Ava Valkner at 68.5, and Evelina Nelson at 66.75. <laughs> Okay, the judges 
having a little think about it. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them to, to line her up well because she must be up there. Probably between Nadine and uh, Evelina. And Evelina. Maybe between Evelina and Eva. Yeah, hard to I'd say. Rather, I call it fourth place. Fourth okay. or third. But maybe yeah, even further up there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Judges really taking their time with it. Last rider making it difficult on them. Yep. They are allowed to review some, some parts of the line. And uh, just to think ahead. Okay. Here we have a score, it's dropping. And 65 points in fourth position, just off the podium. But once again, so its experience pays out over uh, youthful exuberance. But Jackie Passo and Ava Walkner, followed by Evelina Nilsson, Ariana Chicomi, and Nadine Volner are top five there. So two rookies in the top five in the women's ski category, but there she is, Jackie Passo, taking home the top spot. Congratulations, Jackie. Starting really happy for Jackie because she had such a tough year last oh, yeah, year. Oh yeah, last year with was. With crashes and injuries. Uh, at the end there, she really, she could have won the event if she'd stayed on her feet, but. Okay, there we go, Jackie's stoked. One of the first going out of the gate <laughs> was bib number two, setting up the bar and no one could catch her. And I love Jackie, she never shows too much emotion. <laughs> but, but she is inside. <laughs> She's super stoked. Okay, Paso, Valkner, Nilsson, there are the lines, color coordinated. That's very interesting to see, the top lines of the day. We have both the uh, lines of, of one of the podium, Paso and Nilsson, going to the far skiers right, which was the obvious line for the best, most choices we had in there. And a uh, very unique, very thin line that uh, Eva Valkner took made it made her separate from the rest and uh, Paso's uh, big drop at the top definitely made her big score I'm very happy to see uh, the rookie Madame Nielsen really showing great skiing good confidence and yeah you could tell from her body language she was still in her comfort zone we can expect some more from Evelina Okay, and the men's skiers are ready at the top of the mountain here on the Basera Negra Look at this face. panorama view. And These mountains are insane. This is absolutely fabulous. The sky is still blue. The snow is warming up, and the, the men, although they won't have first tracks, they'll potentially have some of the best snow of the day, and these are the guys to look out for. There we go, George Rodney. Taking the win in his rookie season. Whoa! With big air like that. He made him, has himself a name of going huge and fast. In pretty much every condition. Jeremy Heights out of Switzerland. Maybe only one person that goes faster is Jeremy Heights. He is the man of a million miles an hour. Let's see what he will have in for us today. Consumer Mayor of Stumptown, <laughs> we said it many, many times, but he proves it over the years again and again, is Rainy Barkeret. Drew Tabke. Another veteran, 10 years in the making or even more, Flying with Hawaii. two pre World World Tour champions. And Loic Colomb Paton, another pre World World Tour champion as well, 2014. Winning the tour in his rookie season. season. So... Uh, it, it's been done quite a few times recently, <laughs> winning the tour in the rookie season. And yes, the uh, world champs definitely the men to beat. The first man in, 
And uh, we just showed you the men to watch. Drew Tabke. As well as Julian Lopez, actually, another. A wild card. In of the uh, former Freeride World Tour champs as well. So plenty of talent at the top of La Bacera Negra here in Bainor Arcalis, Andorra. And, and the in the gate we have Aymar Navarro, a great skier from Spain, spends a lot of time here in the Pyrenees, kind of his home place. Definitely one of the local heroes, I would say. Spends also quite some time in the in the southern hemisphere, South America, this year, South America got hit with the, some great snowstorms, and we had some great footage coming out of Neymar's winter in the southern hemisphere. He's so motivated. Last season, he was here as well for the event. He scared us a bit with his last drop that was huge, that big air that landed in the rocks. This year, he promised me not to do so. We sure but so. he will not <laughs> back up. He will go big whatsoever. And you can see yep. super technical beginning wow, of the, the run. A, well, nice. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a high side. <laughs> but uh, he's back on his feet. Definitely a huge lack of control in the landing of that huge air. Very technical uh, uh, intro. And he's continuing in the same style. Like, this line choice is absolutely mind-blowing. Crazy. Wow. Well, finishing 10th here last year, wants to do a bit better this year. That one landing will definitely penalize him, but the, uh, the jumps and the choice of line will work in his favor. We, unfortunately, we didn't see the landing of the second, second air coming out of that very technical section. But uh, to be honest, that's, whew, he's the first rider, so it's hard <laughs> to tell, but. This is one of the best line choices I think we're going to see at the top the top section. Coming out to the far skiers left. We saw that from two girls and some snowboarders. And he's catching Boom. air from higher up, landing very solid. There we go, stomping that one clean. Absolutely. He knows how to stomp big cliffs. Unfortunately, on the top, on the top part, he had a big backseat or even hot tub landing. Hot tub landing, I love it. <laughs> yeah, just giving a little of the old hot school tub style. Is a, yeah, although hot tub is a little too much. He, he was not leaning back in the air. That's what you do when you do hot tub. But uh, he definitely got compressed all the way to his butt. And I want to see that replay again, hopefully. Well, we will get it. Double fist pump as he crosses the finish line. So he's happy enough with his Happy enough with his run, and oh, judging criteria. Green across the board. But with that, uh, I guess the size of here we have the it. jump, let's check that it again. Super technical entry right here. This Look at that, there's so craziness. Straight into a. <laughs> yeah, he, he leaned back. Three time rolling down the windows, and the judges didn't seem to care. 71 but points to start things off for Aymar Navarro. But don't get confused um, that the other sections of his run were so good that he got already a great score. Yeah. And of course he got reduced for this uh, yeah. for this issue, but uh, reduced from a great score, score doesn't mean a, all no, the way exactly down. The it way can down. still stay in the 70s. Yeah. Okay, well there you have it folks. That's the score to beat. Opening that would have been definitely in the style. mid 80s to high 80s if that would have been a, a clean stump the, at the top. I can tell you that. Okay, Felix Wimers out of Germany. Five, top 16 on tour last year, four, finished up in 11th three, position. Two, Had a one, shocker here in Andorra last year. So looking to. Uh, prove himself once again on Andorran soil, or Andorran snow as the case actually is. Great rider out of Germany. Second season on tour, and he loves backflips. He's so confident in the air. No wonder with his background as a gymnast. He's actually also doing that professionally still. So 
Landing perfectly into that transition. Yep. That was well spotted, well chosen, Those this that takeoff. This indeed backflip. The backflip was transfer. a little backseated, landed, but uh, not completely on his back. So uh, I hope he doesn't get too much reduction on that one. But that's exactly uh, Felix's style. He's not going into the most exposed and most technical lines, but he mixes it up with huge jumps. Yeah. And solid Stuff landings. Like that. <laughs> and the <perf> Oh, <laughs> you, you, Stick with it. <laughs> that outside ski caught a rock. And luckily he was that stuff. solid on the ski that he managed to get out of it without falling. Solid run for Felix. No doubt. Well, hails from Germany, but uh, spends most of his time riding in the Pitztal, Countertal regions of, of Austria. And that's a great start to the year for Felix Wehmers. Definitely better, uh, well, I can't say definitely because he's the only second guy down the mountain, but compared to his 17th place here last year, <laughs> I think he's going to do a bit better than that. Hope so for him anyways. There here we have the backflip. A little over-rotated. He had to be quick on the rotation because it was not a huge cliff. And that, that was a great transfer over those rocks. Yep. And taking it huge with a Condide-like uh, spread eagle. And here we see the the rock that caught his outside edge. But if you're really solid on the inside, you, you still have a second one. Bit if not. Sam Smoothie-like recovery <laughs> yeah. compared to last year. All right, and the judges' appreciation. 65.25, uh, so the Spaniard Holds on to the top spot, and the German slides into second. As we move back to the top. So the sun is hitting the face, the top section straight away now. It has quite some power by by this time of the day. So the boys we are close to 11 o'clock. I had the pleasure of riding the face yesterday at 11:20, and uh, it was already pretty creamy. Although this time at in the morning we had some really high thin clouds so the sun impact was not as much as yesterday so i guess it will take a little longer to really heat up and become creamy and soft anyway the bottom part stays dry and cold and that's where we have the good snow that's where we have the enjoy enjoyable turns but we are going to see some very enjoyable turns but not many, I can From tell this you man that. here, yeah, exactly. They will be reduced to the minimum. Our current world number two out of Switzerland, Le Maricotte, to be exact, is Jeremy Heights. He has a project going on, a two-year project called La Liste. Google it. You will be blown away by the speed he does in big, big mountains. This kid's incredible. Plenty of podium fi finishes on the Freeride World Tour. Looking for another one here. Out of the five events last year, he finished on the podium four times. Second place here in Andorra last year. So you definitely know he's going to be uh, gunning <coughs> to take over the, the hot seat from Spain's Aymar Navarro, who is currently see holding him. on the first, going over his line in his head there. Yeah, like there is, there is no margin of error or no margin of uh, being a little off your, your track because with his speed, you have to be right on point to knock off uh, the local at the moment in the hot seat. And who else could do it better than uh, Jeremy Heitz? Last season, he found a really good mix of competing and filming with his project La Liste. He was uh, busy all over <laughs> April and uh, May. We had a great session together in Canada and Alaska, filming for a really nice project coming up soon called Quattro Road Trip. More about that later on. And La Liste, for those of you who don't speak French, means the list. So uh, something along the lines of Jeremy's bucket list of gnarly places to shred. <laughs> and uh, this list is all about lines that is that are around his home place. He lives in Limaricotte. Where he lives in uh, 
in the valley, in the valleys area. Yeah, in the valley region of Switzerland, the French speaking and part of Switzerland. And this is surrounded by 4,000 meter peaks, and those are on his list. And he doesn't want to just ride them down, he wants to fly them down. Yeah. Okay, and here he is, flying onto the course, Jeremy Heights. Don't get hooked on up on those rocks, please. Look how thin this is right there. He has to really take care, but now he's getting into the line with full speed. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yo, 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 yo. The on-site speaker just was at a loss for words. Yeah. And the guy, the guy's <laughs> been, the guy's been going off all day long. I mean, <laughs> and that just shut him up. <laughs> I love it. So Jeremy Heights, we said fast and furious is, is our unofficial motto for him, exactly. He starts as he finished in Verbier, full throttle into gnarly parts. Oh. Now coming into the bottom section of the venue with a straight line, oh. triple, oh. and making it look so easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's insane. Okay, top, to, uh, yeah, 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 top yeah. to bottom in about two seconds. That and he just, he just straight lined that bit where normally everybody puts in about five or six turns. He's like, no, nah, that's cool. No, there is, speaking of the straight line, there it is. <laughs> straight to the left, straight yeah. down, straight to the left again, straight down. Thank you, Jeremy Heights. That was very, very impressive. Moving into the top spot. I don't even need to wait for the judges to tell me that. Yeah. That is the obvious. only question now is, is is there anybody <laughs> left in the field? And there's 20-some riders yet to drop. And there we go. That's the best judging criteria we've seen all day. Pretty much green across the board. Fluidity. Don't get much much, much more fluid than that. <laughs> you just go no. straight top to bottom, and you know you, you know, put the green up to 10. You see the you see the ski? Yeah, he definitely hit some rocks somewhere along yep. the line. Could have been uh, that very bottom where he nearly crashed. I mean, and look at this entry into that small chute. Craziness. Oh, and, and and then it's it's not. I a, was always more impressed yeah. by this because that's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> in a good in a good sense of the word, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> I've skied the couloir just next to it, and then I realized that there's quite a lot of grass at the bottom part. Yeah. So he knew that uh, he knows that also from last season. Very smart that he, from that point on, he knew he can kind of get away with uh, riding overdrive spots. And look at this score. 87.5. And we have a new leader, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Well. So Jeremy really not even uh, fulfilled. He stepped up the expectations. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you are Jeremy Heights, it was pretty hard to do already. And another <laughs> yes. caliber of uh, elite Rainy Barker is Rainy Barker. Out of Sweden, 2012 world champ, mayor of Stomptown. That's all we need to say. Watch this. Following uh, the track of his girlfriend? <laughs> or fiance? I think fiance, yes. So uh, th that's kind of the internal battle they have. Don't. Oh, oh yeah, I just thought that was a little bit of off, off axis he wanted to go. But uh, if you're already Barker, you still can handle that. But still, there was some control issue, which is unusual for Mr. Barker. Well, third in the world last year. Very he also has a world title under his belt. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. 2012 world champ. Another air at the bottom, just like Felix Wiemers. Impressive as well. High speed as usual. That's right. Well, Rennie's another one of those guys who lives by uh, go big or go home. As last year, he basically finished on the podium where he crashed out. <laughs> and this time, could be finishing on the podium. I don't think he's taking the top spot off top spot off of Jeremy. You're right. But that was a very solid performance, nonetheless. I think that was also his his intention. Um, line choice showed me that he was not going full on and with full ri uh, risk. Also smart, played it smart because there are so many sharks hidden underneath as we have low tide that uh, you don't want to mess up your your beginning of the of your season campaign with a with a crash. 
and uh, he definitely has a good score, but definitely not the top one, as we have seen an amazing run of Jeremy Heights just before him. Boom. Here we have multiple airs in the beginning of the section. Here, nearly landing on those rocks, so you had to try to avoid it, and uh, I had, he had his hands in the snow. Yeah, rode Another out like air. the champ he is, though. Yep. Another two airs at the bottom. Very solid. Happy with that for sure. Well, finished on the podium here. Third place last year, currently second. And we can already say that uh, his fiance won the internal battle. Yes, because <laughs> she's taken home the top spot. <laughs> Way to go, Jackie. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Look at Jeremy. Yeah. I'm on the hot seat and I'm, yeah. not, I'm not letting it go no, for no, anyone. He's, he's putting him, uh, himself into a comfortable position right now. Yes, indeed. And as he should, because there's quite, <laughs> quite a few riders left to come. Here we have Ooh. a rookie on the tour, a very experienced competitor in free skiing. Benedict Meyer. Benedict Meyer from Germany, living in, Aus in Austria in Innsbruck. Formerly out of Munich, the first time on the Freeride World Tour with a wild card. He has been on the freestyle scene for many, many years, competing in all kinds of... Oh, he's losing a ski. Oh, wow. Didn't crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what a shame. Now, what would have happened if he'd actually finished the run on one ski? That's what I want to know. No. Oh, he still get, would get a score. Oh, would he? Yeah, yeah. Even though he lost the ski? Yeah. Okay. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> if he would go down without a crash. Well, you know, these are the things that snowboarder unhooking and having yeah, to walk yeah, back yeah. up. And, and but it, you see, he didn't even do anything wrong. He just hit a rock. Yeah. And it, it chipped away his ski. That's it. And uh, if you, we're probably going to have a rerun of uh, uh, Jeremy Heitz's run. And you could tell by the, also by the body language, how he, how he tried to not weight his skis at all because this is at th as thin as it gets. Yes, yeah. You see all those peppers sticking out next to Bene at the moment? These are all rocks and these are just the ones you see. The ones that are hidden underneath are not even obvious. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly it. That's, that's why we call them sharks because they come up out of the snow from nowhere and grab onto the skis or the snowboards and uh, and knock our riders for a loop. Or usually yeah. they do, but uh, Benny there just didn't even react. He just kept skiing, <laughs> kept going on one ski. It's pretty fantastic to see. And then he decided, well, you know what? I, it might be a bit safer if I stopped <laughs> and got my ski back on the mountain. Here we have the vision. Have a look at this. This is what the riders see going into that shoot, into that super tight shoot, and he's not backing off, taking yeah. it just like Jeremy. Beautiful. That's oy the, oy 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 oy. the hero cam brought to you by GoPro. That was not very smart. Like, crashing is never smart. <laughs> and he, he, he didn't do it on purpose for sure, but, uh, no. but you can see that is really shallow. Well, he wanted to really give it a go after losing his ski. So, yeah. and that was actually a great opportunity. And unluckily for for Benny, but uh, luckily enough for us, he had that GoPro Hero Cam on, and we were able to get a a great vision of uh, of what the riders see as they make their way down the mountain. Yeah, and it is impressive. And uh, you could actually see that. You have to come in on the skier's left. You don't see the landing. Um, it is uh, hidden. Of course, the, the takeoff is super steep. So as soon as you are in the land in the takeoff spot, you see the landing. That's the, the good thing. It shows just how hard it is to uh, to scope those lines, too. There we go as we move back to the point of view camera for a second there. It is not easy to read the mountain at uh, full speed only no rider is allowed in the mountain in the face before competition bottom from the side wherever they can also hike to the top 
but they actually have to ski on to the back side of the mountain to ski out of it. That's all the opportunities they have. And on some, in some places like Verbier, as they hike up, they have a view of the face, but here, that's not the case, or is it? They, they were allowed to hike up to where they start at the moment. So that's what Five, some of the four, riders took the advantage three, yesterday. Two, okay. One, um, but still, it's the little parts of, uh, of the mountain is okay. visible from the top. On course, the flying Hawaiian, Drew Tabke out of the US of A, 2011 and 2013. Free Ride World Tour Always champion. Always good for very, very oh, creative lines. And never. What's, what we see now is one of them. Yeah, you oh, oh, that's so shallow there. Oh, Drew. Oh, this, this <laughs> Don't is, scare this us. This is why we love him and hate him at the same time. Can oh you, can my you goodness. Come on. Have Stay a look at the, feet, the, the style of riding, how smooth they try to be in these sections with a huge oh, 360. Oh, little back seats, unluckily. But uh, that was, damn, that was huge. Yeah, that was massive. Mahusive. <laughs> um, and that. <laughs> Well, he'll lose a few Ooh. points for that landing, but that was wild. Way to go, Drew. Now, this is the part and where Jeremy straight lined. Oh, one. my goodness. How was that transfer? Oh, there's just a few rocks in the way. That's okay. I'll jump over them. Drew Tabke. Well, they As don't call we know him, the, him the flying Hawaiian for nothing because he's got wings to make it over uh, and down parts of the face like that. Absolutely crazy, two-time world champion, and uh, kind of throwing down the gauntlet to everyone as well. That you know what, I'm back look, in look the at race. That. You see the, the, yeah, the that rocks was, appearing yeah, after his after turn. After his turn, exactly. So there's not a whole lot of snow cover. Here we have the 360, completely blind rollover. Fantastic. Mm, I would. No, he. I mean, I would not land. deduct him too much. He didn't no, back he seat. Solid. He didn't back seat. And that's you know. Got strong legs, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little confusing when you have a lot of uh, snow in the air in your landing. Then uh, judges can be kind of confused to say, ah, he was backseat or back. Yeah, you never know. Well, yeah. a lot of green there on the judging criteria. Line so. for sure, all the way up there. Also because he managed to link everything. There was no like uh, getting from one side to the other. That's what the judges love. If you decide to finish your line at some point, try to find the direct way to it. And that's what he did be um, better than anyone else yet. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jeremy Heights doesn't look like he's concerned. ready to give up that hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> he does, no, doesn't look too concerned he, at all. Here we see the, ju the judges have the possibility to see some uh, replays. And I'm very sure that they watch precisely the replay of the 360 of, of Drew. Ah, oh, for sure, and the landing, because the, I mean, it was huge, and we saw from uh, from Aymar Navarro as well, the our, the first rider in. Um, you will, if the jump is big enough, even if the landing is not perfect, uh, it'll still score. You'll just be deducted a few points, but it's not going to uh, affect the score in a major way. Yeah, unless you and really do a big roll. Just over looking up that mountain again. Yes, have a look at the, the top line. part after kind of the traverse over and then the first jump. This is so gnarly, and if you have to find that perfect spot, there was not much room for for the landing. Okay, so well, it must be. What's it gonna be? Ooh, 68.75. Ah, seat behind Aymar. Yeah. Now that's exactly what we're talking about. So some massive jumps in there, but be that because he he did have a bit of the hands down on the on the second landing as well. Uh, he was compressed to the back. Yeah, but but uh, for and me maybe they did, for me he didn't touch he didn't touch the snow at all on the on this last jump. On the second yeah. on this, as you said, it but was on, a, a but beautiful on the transfer. three he was really all. I guess you could go as far as a back slap. So, okay, George Rodney, enough of Drew. Let's but definitely the most talented, our reigning world champ, George Rodney. Love Another phenomenon, ah. free world world champion in his rookie season. We had that before. It is something magical about having no pressure, no eyes on him where last year no one was, was expecting anything. 
and he walked away with the Fiat World Tour title. It's different this year. Much now more pressure. Big things. And he's going wow. big. Wow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was that? There you go. <laughs> like, and, now, and he goes that big that everyone thinks he's going to explode. So is that? No, he's just backseat. Yeah, and bounces off, like, off again. And bounces right back up and off he goes again. And so he loses the pole on the way. <laughs> but which which is, does not which does not penalize him like losing a ski would. No, but it definitely irritates him while riding. Yeah, that's, that's not that's easy at sure. all. That's not that's not really what he wants. So that, that's probably going to affect his choice in line. I wouldn't be even surprised if he just chucks away the second pole and goes and just goes full on freestyle. Yeah, could be. <laughs> but that was so big. That was crazy. And not the steepest landing as well, so. No, but lose it now losing the pole, though, unfortunately, is going to affect the rest of the line. As we can see, I think. And he's a little lost there. That's yeah. not what the judges want to see. That's really a big penalty there. <laughs> um, if you look it into a line, that's what you can do free riding without competition. Yeah. But if you do a comp, you well, better know your line perfectly. And another oh. air. I was and say. sticking. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! He is one of the tallest guys on tour, and he has stump legs like hardly any other. It's unbelievable. And only 22 years old, so talk about a big future in front of him. Yeah. Still a student at the University of Utah. Okay. Here we have really technical entry right there. He's going slalom through the court, through this uh, rock course, and then a roll over, yeah. huge air rock cliff. That was amazing. And then, this but with a full back back seat yeah, and full back, back slap. slap. Yeah. But that with one and pole. Have, have you seen that re like that punch yeah. that he he took that landing like a boss? Yes, he did. Well, he is a boss. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your pole better, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, loving it. <laughs> Look at that. He's no doubt. Well, that's a. I mean, that's a, that's a great start to the season, you know. Even if he's he's knocking Jeremy's. And the backpack <laughs> is not the smallest. No, 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 no. <laughs> not he's at all. doing those huge he's airs. Got a big old ABS in there. The heights is just going. That's cool. That's all right, kid. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was impressive. Okay. 6125 6 spot for George Radu. Ah. Not bad. It's okay. You got a throw away kid. It's all right. Remember, his first his first result last year was 29 points. Or a Here uh, we have <laughs> Julian Lopez. From coming from a really young rider, George Rodney, to a veteran, Julian Lopez. Yeah, that's a nice way of saying really old guy. <laughs> no, he's not actually that no, old. No, I know he's But not. he's on tour for ages. For ages. 2009 Freeride World Tour champion. And yes, he's been around. Oh. Riding on his own skis, branded with Mami Jan. His new place. Check it out wherever you are and want to eat well and party hard. It's a good place to do it. Definitely. Boom. Another air. He's always good for Come big on, airs. Julio. And for a backflip. No, oh, that's... Perfect. Oh, you well I really thought that he didn't have enough rotation. Yeah, me Sorry too. about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Ah, he wanted to take that one too, but he saw it was a little sketchy. Yeah, snowboarders only. But he there, already Julian. has three jumps in there, so you're yeah. fine. He's doing. It's his better. last year on the Free Ride World Tour. Definite. For sure. I don't know. He wants to put on a good performance. True. Last year he had a bit of a yeah. shocker. But they gave him a wild card to uh, have one last go around, and he wants to make the best of it. His list, yes, very and nice. Another nice section at the bottom. It's going to a creative end. As we see, this is pretty yeah. shallow, not a lot of snow left. Perfect landing at the bottom, yeah, and stumped. he is psyched. Yes. This pump for the Frenchman. Pumped, Frenchman. pumped, pump. No doubt. All right, yeah, Julian Lopez feeling it. Well, his <laughs> list of competitive accomplishments is really too long to go into right now. Um, and uh, all we can say is a, another fantastic performance to add to 
through a career full of them. Once again, 2009 Freeride World Tour champion and showing us that... Uh, Shutting down speed here. Why? Because of this. You! Here, backflip, perfectly executed. You couldn't go any more tweaked or what do you call it, like bent. <laughs> and that was needed because he didn't have the perfect momentum from the start of that rotation, but he made it around and perfect stomp. Okay, well, Julian's fired up, but is it enough to uh, move into the top five? Here we have Mami Jan. You have to switch those skis around, man. <laughs> Junior Lopez with... Okay. Great score for him. Brilliant work. Yeah, he's fired up. So like we said, last year on tour, and he wants to uh, make it count. Oh, I'm already afraid of partying with him. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him a wild card, and he's uh, making sure that he puts it to good use. And we're heading back to the top. Let's see who's going to be in the start gate this time. We do have a start list, but due to... Uh, Various technical difficulties for some riders. We're not really following along, but it looks like we are here. So this should be Ville Lindbergh out of Sweden, and it is. The smart Swedish. He is one of the most fun to be around with. Unbelievable. Still 12 years old in his head, like we all are, and unbelievable skier. Showing his talent for many years on the Freeride World Tour with great results. One of the best friends of Mayor of Stomptown, Rene Barkered, showing his super high speed skills. Great top part of this, this venue. <laughs> Flying over those peppery parts, rocky sections. Now he gets into the middle part, cruising over to that far skier's left. Well, Vile, another one of those riders has the potential to step onto the podium when he can put a solid run together from the top to the bottom. Here we come, entering that bottom part, which is going to get steep and steep, steeper. Come on, Vile. Hold it together, because he... We saw his good friend Jeremy Heights come going... On, do it. Similar... Oh! And he gets caught. I didn't say it earlier, Warnsky. because I didn't want to jinx him, but he starts well and oftentimes has a problem with the finish. Mm. And that's exactly what happened right there to Vile Lindbergh. What a shame. Yep, certainly was because he was looking easy top five. Look at this entry, really technical. Yeah, that was and great. another little bonk there, which kept it, uh, which put him a little bit uh, out of balance, tweaked his upper body a little bit, uh, and then the outside ski got caught and uh, pushed him into that uh, twist or into yeah, that tumble. There were no, it wasn't a, wasn't an Skis, issue with rocks or no. with uh, anything like that. It was just a like on his last little bonk, off balance. Yeah, he uh, he got a little off axis because the I think the this this little patch of snow that he landed before the jump um, was a little uh, a, a bank. It was not a straight. Yeah. So that was not oh, easy for him to. Poor Vile. Mm. No, that's unfortunate. But it looks like nothing tweaked, torn, or broken. So he will be back in Chamonix, where he had really good results. I remember a run. Uh, was it 2013 or 12? 2013. Finished 13. in, thir in uh, third know, place. I'll, I'll only do it out of my mind, so sorry for that. No, no, no that's, uh, that's why I have stat sheets in front of you, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> and that run was incredible with that huge air in the middle of the face into that rock garden. It's actually uh, on the Suchet, on the graphic uh, of many Freeride World Tour posters and uh, event advertising. A very memorable moment, memorable <laughs> moment uh, in Freeride World Tour history. All right, so we've... Uh one of these snowboard guides has dropped down in the face to help Vile pick up his lost ski. 
And as soon as he gets that on and makes his way down to the bottom, we will be able to uh, head back up to the top for our next start. As uh, Jeremy Heights and Randy Barkred have a bit of a chat there down the bottom. There are the standings, Heights, Lopez, Barkred, and Navarro are the, uh, are the boys. Just a little reminder for everyone floor. for this time as we wait for for uh, Billy Limbeck getting back his skis on. If you want to ask some questions to the pro riders, go to Facebook page Freeride World Tour. Put your question on with the hashtag Ask F -U -F -W -T Riders. And we'll try and get those questions answered for you on air. And yeah, still, still blue skies here over the uh, top of the Masada Negra. Few clouds rolling in around town. So we'd really like to uh, keep things running here. We have Willy Lindbergh with bib number 11 getting back on his skis, which means we We're are uh, a little bit almost, over third. Yeah, almost halfway through the field. Okay, and uh, speaking of that hashtag, ask FWT riders, we have Davide back up the top with some questions to be asked. Take it away, Davide. All right, guys, I'm here with Sam Smoothie, and he's going to ask, or he's going to answer a couple questions. Uh, are you going to do another hacker this year? Uh, feeling pretty chilled out this year. Just going to uh, enjoy my time in the mountains and just uh, have fun with the lads. Second question from Jeremy. How many fish can fit on the roof of the Riders Hotel? Jeremy, that's a good question, and I'm glad you asked. One is all you need on the Lake Como. Uh, was it not Lake Como? It's uh, Hotel Como. One fish is all you need. Well, there you go. Back to you guys. Thanks, Davide. And Martin, you were laughing at that joke, so if it's an insider. Can you answer, please? Um, What's so funny? I won't tell the whole joke. OK. But uh, definitely it involves one fish. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it involves one no, fish. I don't uh, know what fish that is. That but fish that appeared uh, after a big night out, okay. after the event okay. last season. And uh, if you pass out on uh, a floor which is not your room, uh -huh. then you might end up uh, waking up with a fish in your face. OK. And that fish got... Uh, carried away into other board bags of course and ski it did. bags. Yes. Connor Pelton on his way down the mountain. Next right on course. Yep, out of the US of A. Connor, another one of our talented young Americans. Here we go, second air. Really solid, you can see perfect technique. Still a little crusty there, nice tweak. Not going too big, but very solid and relaxed. Connor in his third year on tour. Finished up seventh here last year, so decent performance. Wouldn't mind finishing here in 2016 with a podium. He's in line with uh, many other riders, choosing that top right section, skiers right, and then going even further skiers right at the bottom section. You can see a lot of tracks from different categories been yeah. thrown down. He still found a beautiful spot yeah. to land. You see that little pocket that he landed into? And with style, looks happy about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yep. solid. Just missed a rock right there, <laughs> he had to lift up his ski. You have to be aware until you are past the finish line of hitting rocks. Yeah, as you said, you have to stay light on your feet with the conditions today. Well, that was a fast one from top to bottom for Connor Pelton, currently residing in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, originally out of Michigan. That's not a from big free ride no, resort. The, the flatlands of the Midwest, not at all. He is happy. Yes, indeed, and uh, spending a lot of time riding Alpine Meadows in Squaw Valley as well. So, Jackson Hole local. There we go, judging criteria. Green across the board. Nothing maxing out, but a very solid run. So, potentially moving into the top five is Connor Pelton. 
Judge is very quick with the score. Ooh, 63.5, seventh position. Just in between Rodney and Beamers. So he was thinking that maybe they could have thrown the dog a bone and moved him up a spot or two, but still. But I'm pretty sure that he knows that he didn't go yeah. to a winning line. No, he's, for he's sure, that, that's for the, choice, yeah, the choice of line. He's been, yeah, he's been doing uh, it for a while. He knows exactly. Snow is really good to, to stomp, so uh, if uh, people don't really uh, um, jump on or ride over rocks, uh, we have uh, not many crashes today, so it's going to be tough for the judges in the end okay. to squeeze them all in, those scores. Indeed. Garrett Altman got engaged here in Andorra last year, so it's a, a special place for him. Finished top 16 in the 16th position to requalify. One of the more experienced riders. Oh, very on the tour. experienced, very experienced. Loves to throw down the old school tricks. And uh, actually, he was calling me out at dinner last night for not knowing all the names. So I promised him we would sit down over a beer and uh, he could give me a, a little tutorial on all the names of the old school ski tricks. And the age doesn't hold, let him hold back on Not the technical all. areas. Nothing tricky there, though. He decided, he said, I don't know if, we're gonna, if you're going to be able to call a lot of my tricks because i got a pretty good line for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's living up to his word so far. He had to wait quite a bit until he dropped into that very technical section. That's not what the judges want to see that much, but uh, it was pretty gnarly going in there. So I uh, hope they ex excuse that. <laughs> doing some cruisy turns. Don't know if he's uh, yeah, getting into... Ah, he, he's getting it from the from very, angle, very top. Exactly, he, yeah. Oh! Losing his ski, Garrett. stopping. Oh. No. That's not Damn what he wanted to do. Yeah. It was not his fault. He actually crashed while hitting a rock. What a shame, but in yep. in the one of the steepest part of the mountain, you see right there. That's it, the back of the ski. Just Luckily, he made, he he stopped right away. Otherwise, he would have gone for a ride. Yeah, most definitely. That's rather exposed. Yeah. And also cool that he still has his ski. Yeah, as that well. So we don't have to wait either. Uh, it could have been very dangerous, to say the least. Ah! The 36-year-old really out of Taos, New Mexico, there. is very upset. As are we, because he was, you know, he's putting on a good show there for a while. Yeah. And he still has to because there's no other way out. Yep. <laughs> so, get ready, get ready for a big drop here from Garrett. Put Altman. those binding arms pro properly. No doubt. Be going for an air. There's our current standings once again. George Rodney, reigning world champ, currently sitting in eighth. So three very experienced and talented skiers at the top of our rankings as Garrett continues on to the bottom of the mountain. But we already know due to his loss of ski, that will be a did not finish, which is always an unfortunate result to have. But as we said, he'll have a chance to make up for it in Chamonix, Chamonix, France, and Fieberbrunn, Austria, before the uh, first of two cuts on tour this season. The first cut qualifying for Alaska and the second cut qualifying for the season finale in Verbier. So Garrett Altman, very disappointed. Quite understandably, because he was putting on a good show up to that point. And we are back to the top with Fabio Studer. Out of Austria. Here we go, another really talented rider, yes. Fabio Studer. Always exciting to watch. Has been on the freestyle scene for many, many years. Still is, still throws some huge tricks in innovative parks. Yep. Tour wildcard this year.
wildcard because he was injured on the first event last year in Chamonix. Yeah. He hit some rocks on the back. Season. So he's back, fresh legs, with the cork three. Yep. Signature trick of him. Oh, uh, probably even a flat three is a signature trick of him. Into the next rock, just like Rainy Barker had. But he had the better direction. Not super solid in the technique, because it was quite a rough ride, but uh, no deduction and control, I would say. Book three was beautiful. That was. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, free riding's a beautiful thing, Martin. Absolutely, that's why we all do it. <laughs> Here we have a perfect uh, hero cam, hero cast. You see it was rolling over. You have no idea exactly where the landing is. You have to trust your gut feelings and uh, your visual inspection. Throwing in a little bit of a Japan air into that bottom roller. So line choice was pretty obvious. Kind of the, let's call it our main line down the mountain. And, uh, but he threw in uh, a freestyle element with the Cork 3, which the judges really appreciate. We had Julian Lopez, for example, doing a backflip off that same cliff. Which Although Julian had a stronger finish, I would say. Here we have the three. Perfect landing. Although this was also pretty technical, well executed. Highlights and here we have run. the hero cast view from, I would say this is the, the middle, middle uh, part. And here, the last section that we only saw on the hero cast in the live. With another air getting out of it. So three solid features or jumps in the run. Oh, then the judges, oh, I didn't think they'd like it that much. Oh, well, there we go. Potentially, well, it's, it's getting crowded at the top, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a potential top five finish, but I, I'm not quite so sure about that at this point. Yeah, 78.5 is Randy Barkard's third place score. Imar Navarro, 71 points in fourth. And Drew Tabke, 68.75 in fifth. Waiting for the score, Fabio, not knowing yet where he will end up. There we go, representing. Home resort, Silveretta Montafon in good old Vorarlberg. Well, one thing's for sure, he's not, <laughs> Jeremy Heights is not ready to move out of the hot seat. No, and I don't think uh, that Fabio manages to push him off the hot seat. No. Um, there was so much more to it, to Jeremy's line. But still, it's going to be a decent score in my eyes. Uh, but the judges well, really want to uh, nail the points. Oh, 84. But All not right, in very second close. Position. Yes. Okay. Just okay. above Julian Lopez. Lopez, exactly. So knocking uh, Randy Barkret off of the podium. So Jeremy Heights, Fabio Studer, and Julian Lopez is your uh, current podium right now. But still. Riders to come. And speaking of those riders, we have another one in the start gate. Another super oh. motivated rider, experienced guy from. <laughs> it's okay. It's easier for you to you pronounce. Can say no, no, no. It's and here good. you will see a high speed run as he's Ooh. known for, similar to Jeremy, always full throttle. Oh, 39 years old, plenty of experience. Come on! Ooh, sending it big and stomping it perfectly. That's what we want to see. Now, regroup yourself. This is the middle section of the venue. Don't go, yep. Bad. Can do better, but fabulous up top. Absolutely, so hard to ski it any faster. 
No doubt. Well, his best result last season was here in Andorra, but not. Yes. Landing it or. Yeah, Whoa, that Steph. was good. No doubt. He took it from a little uh, lower part, that bottom section, that <laughs> obvious cliff, but then He's the claiming. second one was really. That was great. Yeah, so once a again, nice floater. he channeled, uh, used his uh, Austrian home advantage at the rerun of the Fieber Brood event that we had here in Andorra. Um, that was his best result on tour last year, seventh place finish. So, and Stefan feeling it. He's loving it, no doubt. Double fist claim times two. We had some good days riding in the preseason, and uh, he told me that he's really feeling yeah, well, yeah. and uh, well. nothing is tweaking in it. <laughs> Definitely Torn, showing in his and riding. That's what he's shown in his riding. Yeah, he had already some great days in Alberg. It's a good training ground at home. And always fabulous attitude, always smiling, even after rough results sometimes. He's still always looking forward to the next contest. And uh, this one's a beauty. Hard to find anyone more motivated than Mr. Heisel. Yeah, for sure. No, he is. And as we said, a vet. One tour win back in 2011 in Fieberbrunn on home turf. Plenty of podiums along the way. Several times in title contentions in the last event. Not yet managed to, to bring one home. Nope. But... Uh, did win the He's not done yet. Yeah, the judge is really liking it. So did Stefan, so here we go. Won the World Qualifying Series in 2010. And his best ever finish on the Freeride World Tour, fourth in 2011. So plenty of talent. Yeah. I don't think that Jeremy needs to be nervous right no. now. No, I don't think but, uh, so either. But, uh, we yeah. have so many riders to come that the judges really have to nail those, uh, those scores. We are not going back to other scores anymore. Like uh, in previous years, we, we held the official results until the last rider went down. But uh, this, this, year, this what you see is what you get. Exact. The, the riders or the judges have the possibility to uh, not give a score for the moment and postpone the decision. Here we have a decision, and it's a good one for Stefan. It's 81.75, putting him in fourth place. All right. Way to go, Stefan Heusel. Well, happy man. Definitely happy smile with that. On, yeah, smile on his face. It's pretty crowded at the top, so uh, we already have four riders in the 80s. Next up, the young Frenchman, Louis Lemmett. But as usual on the Freeride World Tour, you have to come up with something amazing to win. And uh, yeah, here it's seen, yeah. today is no other day than a typical Freeride World Tour comp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a young 22-year-old. Can only recommend to look at the background as well. Be inspired and come here to Andorra. Valnora Alcalis is a good pick. Here we see Leo the young Summit. French yep. Chamonard Going wow. huge at the beginning. Fantastic Very start. creative entry. Let's see how he can follow up on that one. It's super critical in there. Not much snow left. Exit of uh, Aymar Navarro. And it seems like he did a really good job. We didn't see the landing properly, but, uh, but he came out fast. Yep. He disappears again out of... Visibility, probably with a lo another little drop to connect to that lower section. Heading to the skier's left into a very tiny shoot. I think we saw Eva Wagner go through there. Somebody. Getting hooked at a little bit on the grass. Or was it a rock? It's a little mix down there. Yep. Oh. Going off the edge. <laughs> oh. All right. That was a hard stomp. You felt that, didn't you, Mark? Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but but wow, I, I yeah. have to look at the run like from solid, with my own very, eyes very right now. The, 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 the track and that was not easy coming into that last part. No, nope. wow, Great. that 
really impressive of this young rider. Great lines, some big drops. That's exactly it. 22 years old, already qualified for the tour in 2013 as we check out his line on there. This Pretty is straight top unique. to bottom, huh? Yeah. Yep. This is unique. We haven't seen that line at all by uh, till now. So and very solid, everything under control. You can see the green. loving it. Oh, wow. Whoa, that's Could we have now, a new leader? Now I think Jeremy can be nervous. Okay, we could have a new leader here. And the, uh, the local fans be. loving that one. Either that or a bit of the French crew came down from the Alps. Leo Slimit. Okay, whoa. 86 points in second place. <laughs> Fair enough, but Jeremy Heights. <laughs> he uh, was nervous. He was <laughs> nervous for a second. The first time all day. First time since he sat down and got comfortable. He thought, oh no, but I really? Do I have to get up now? <laughs> yeah. And you know what's surprising? Like this seat. We talk about Jeremy Heights for three years now, being a winning contender, being one of the best of the best. But he has never won an event. I know, it's amazing. He came second, third, many times, and uh, many times it looked like, oh, that's the one he won now, and then someone came and impressed the judges even more. We have one of those days. He's in the hot seat. He's and we hope for him he can hang on. Yeah. But you never know. And but uh, there are plenty of riders that have something against four, that. No doubt, three, and it's been a great two, day for the rookies one, so far in uh, quite a few categories. Here's another one out of Alieska. Alaska, that's his home resort from Girdwood is his hometown. This is Max Durchi, 20 years young. One of the youngest riders on tour. There's four 20 year olds this year. And he won the free ride world qualifiers for the Americas region. So watch this kid. Here we have first impression of him on the world tour. And it's a good one. Going into very de technical areas with a nice air exiting that one following Leo's limits tracks right here this time the helicopter is prepared nice little air shifty very sure that he has some uh, freestyle background in his bag yes he does i'm also uh, all right kind of, it's a blank paper for me i haven't seen anything that's exactly of it. the young rider yet so i cannot tell he uh, won the Solomon Freeride Extreme four star last year. That's pretty nice much it. Nice air at the bottom. Really solid. He looks comfortable yeah. within his limits. Solid performance for his first appearance on the World Tour. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Swatch Freeride World Tour, Max Dirchi. Way to go, kid. All right. Interesting interpretation of the mountain as well for the youngster. So showing us that he definitely has a bit of a freestyle background, but coming from yep. Alaska, obviously knows a thing or two about riding the steeps. A lot of control, as you say, in steep terrain. Choosing his line well. Everything in the positive range. Nothing too extreme, but there is no need for a premiere on the tour. No, for first run on tour, uh, that one was very well executed. Max Durchi. He's definitely happy to be down, being amongst all those riders he's been probably watching for a while from back home. 62 points, so 11th position but in front of the reigning world champion, another young American, so he, he'll <laughs> be happy enough with that. Okay. Yeah, but he didn't try such a huge air. <laughs> no, 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 but th there's plenty of time for that. <laughs> just so long, he's, he's just looking to make the cut for Alaska so he can go home and show the boys a thing or two. Okay, here we go, Logan Pahuta. He is a tour wild card. He is another one of the Young Americans or young North Canadians. Americans. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, Canadians and Americans too, actually. <laughs> they are just they're just not from the United States of America, but they are North Americans. True. Yeah. Looking forward to see his first appearance on the Freeride World Tour.
He has been invited to the Skiers Cup before. And put on a fantastic performance. Yep, and already being invited says that you have a name in free skiing and yeah. he shows with a triple at the top. Really good entry into that line. And uh, proving that with a solid exit, another air into the flats. Well, so good. that first section really showed that he deserves to be here. Yeah. From talking from his age, you can see <laughs> that there must be some freestyle in him. And there is. And there is. <laughs> <laughs> well, 21 years old. That's why he was so impressive at the Swatch Skiers Cup last year in Switzerland, was which includes backcountry freestyle and extreme as well wow oh, come on stay on your feet kid yes that was close All buddy right. use the Made force it. logan yes All saved right. it Woo. and finished perfectly so there we go yeah very impressive uh in that swatch skiers cup in switzerland last year which combines backcountry freestyle and backcountry big mountain riding as we see the start the triple at the start once again great start into that yeah. as i said with the triple it's not easy with that crud and i'm pretty sure that there are some proud parents at home late night it's uh, in the middle of the night in canada right now but i'm pretty very sure they're still up and watching well, the judges are very impressed as well with logan's dad very big mountain ski legend in his own right exactly stepping into his footsteps yep it's in the jeans folks and in the mountains as well logan pota yeah whistler is not a bad place to grow up especially right now they have tons of snow over there judges reviewing some lines see from the left another free skiing icon legend Brandt Moles appearing in several matchstick produ production movies <laughs> Bertie Denervo one of the best snowboarders I would say all all round snowboarders That's right he competed in every discipline possible and here we have a score there we with go 86.5 so rankings changing again still though Jeremy Heights in the hot seat we're liking it. Now, we love all the riders mm. and we don't play favorites, but <laughs> it's been a long time coming for Jeremy Heights. And I have to say at this point, I would not mind seeing him take the win here today. But not done yet. Another We're not rookie far from coming being up. done. Exactly. Trace Cook Five, four, three, out of Canada two, from. Uh, Whitewater, British Columbia, that's the whole mountain. Out of Nelson is his hometown. Come on, Trace. Boom. So third There's place. A really small ski area there, but with great potential for free riding. Whitewater, skied there before some buddies, and uh, I was really impressed. Want to be back soon. Yeah. He's showing some really technical lines at the, at the top. Only 20 years old as well, another one of our 20-year-olds. Finishing Ooh. with the air oh. that we've seen before. I guess he's already stoked about his run. No, he's got to be. Just don't over-amp. Oh! 360 with a back seat. He over uh, Some troubles, yes. Yep. That was it. Yeah, he could see his body language was fully excited to get there. But uh, he didn't uh, enter that little zone. No, and it wasn't as a, he wanted to. It wasn't a big slam, but that still is enough to. We are here at the elite of the free riders, yeah. so uh, just even a little trouble can uh, deduct you in in rankings quite a lot. Yeah, and that that was enough trouble right there, unfortunately. But still, a very impressive performance from uh, the twenty-year-old Canadian. Absolutely, especially line choice is right up there. No. Oh! <laughs> you are kidding me. Just a little front flip. I think he wanted to do a little it slap on this uh, knoll. Yeah. And was going come a on, bit you too skied fast. here. It's rocky. Well, <sighs> lack of experience. 
youthful exuberance. Sometimes yeah. the, youth, the youthful exuberance pays off. Probably. It, yeah, it looks like it. And sometimes it doesn't. Are they really? Well. That's a shame. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, with his, with already with the, the one bail up top, S probably. Still, it will, it will affect, it'll his, affect score his score. Because it'll affect his score. Going to Alaska will decide sometimes over such scores. Yeah, we hope that. And uh, I don't want to give it away already, <laughs> or I can't. No one can. But uh, it is tough on the World Tour. Yeah, it's only the top 16 riders who make it through. But uh, definitely he did a great first impression on us. Oh, yeah. For the, the rookie, 20 years old. Great com combination of very technical line. Mixing up with freestyle elements, great line choice from top to bottom, not only like a, a wow effect at one part of the, the hill, but really top to bottom, solid performance. Yeah. And there we go, 42.25, and that's what happens when you fall. And he fell twice, so quite normal that the judges knock him back a bit for that. Okay, we saw the, uh, we, <laughs> we, saw, we saw the masked man on, on screen earlier. This Jeremy is nervous. Yes. And at the same time, good friend Sam charge. Well, this is uh, the defending event champion. He finished up fifth in the world last year. And here in Valnor, Ar 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 Bainor Arcaris, he threw down what many were calling the run of the season last year. It was definitely the run of the event, that's for sure. And Sam Smoothie out of Treble Cone, New Zealand, is off and rocking here in Andorra once again. Out of the gate, going big. Oh, you, you, oh. you, you are kidding me. <laughs> is he okay? No, he's injured his knee. Okay, well. No, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, come on, uh, no, no, it's no. really. Yeah, looks like he's, uh, he's trying to get up. He's gonna no, 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 you're no. kidding me. Oh, no. Yeah, no, he's... No, we had... Oh, no, that's such a bummer. We had the triangle overhead. He should be waving to us if he's okay. And he's obviously he's having... He's in pain. No, he's no, in he's real in pain. pain. He's having a hard time standing up. So, realistically, the judges... He's a tough cookie, Sam. Yeah. So if he can, what is he doing? Make his way down the mountain on his own two feet, he will. But if he really has injured his knee, we he don't should I mean stay he's landed straight he on is. the rocks. He would land straight on the rocks. Yeah. And you can tell, look at he's already holding his knee there. Yeah. So because we do have the possibility there are doctors on the mountain. They if Sam were to have stayed in place, the doctors would have skied down to him, examined him, and if he'd wanted to be flown out with the helicopter, we could have done so. At any point on the way down now, he can stop and call for the helicopter, and they will come in and fly him out. But he is one big, tough Kiwi with a huge pride. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and if he can make it down to the bottom of the mountain under his own power, he will. Now it looks oh, like I just hope that he's not injured because he has so much on the line in this season. His season well, he was could be the dream <laughs> season for every free rider, traveling and competing in yeah, the best, nicest spots in the world. He's making plans for with his one of his team managers for filming in Alaska. Uh, around the free ride world tour event in Haynes this year. You can see the camera hanging off the his helmet. <laughs> well, if there's a silver lining, that's going to make sense. It's not a bad sign that he's skiing. No. Like, I he must be smart enough not to risk more and more injuries by just skiing down. But, uh, you would you would like to think so. It's either that or he got <laughs> such an adrenaline rush from that 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 he can't feel the that he can't feel the pain. No, but obviously but he's definitely he's skiing on the left now, leg, so he 
tries to not weight the right hand. Too much ski. the right hand. That's exactly it. Okay. While we wait for Sam to make his way down the mountain, we're going to throw down to uh, to Mike, who's in the uh, well. He's he's right next to the hot seat with Jeremy Heights. Take it away, Mike. Hello, welcome back down to the finish. We're down here in the land of Whoop Whoop with a man who's been sitting in the hot seat for an awful long time. The missile himself, Jeremy Heights, man who loves straight lines. we got some uh, public questions for you here that have been passed on. This one's from Richard. Do you choose your line, Jeremy, and stick with it at all costs, or do you sometimes change your line in the middle of your run? No, normally I, I take, when I choose a line, I take only one, and I, I stay in my first choice. Yeah. yeah. What are the what are the what are the elements that will make you change your mind? Um, sometimes. So today we were last. So on there is no that much snow. So sometimes the when it, when there is technical um, part, yeah, the 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 rider just before take away the the, um, the snow. So sometimes we have to change our mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you judge well, man. Good luck. Good luck. I hope the hot seat works for you. Back to you, Dave and McFly. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. And I don't know what Jeremy's talking about because there were parts of his line today where there was no snow and he just went straight through it. So, <laughs> very uh, whatever. True. There's, you know, everybody has their own vision, I guess, of, of when there's not much snow left. So, okay, Sam Smoothie has made it to the bottom. Get well soon, Sam. We hope the injury's not too too harsh. To a rookie out of Norway, this is. Dennis Riesvold and uh, qualifying in second position on the free ride world qualifiers threw down some absolutely mind blowing jumps on his way to qualification. And he's not even a foreigner to the free ride world tour. He had uh, s at single stops like in uh, Roldal, Norway, he had his appearance and if I'm not mistaken, he won there with his uh, wild card for the single event. But uh, I don't want to give it away. He did some amazing performances already in our circus, in our community, and uh, he's not going to disappoint us. No, definitely not. 28 years old, so plenty of experience. Going big over that one, just oh. clearing that rock. Hope he didn't touch it, didn't look like it, didn't but like uh, it, no. he was definitely surprised and scared. By the size of the jump. And by the rock coming closer, coming closer because exactly. uh, it had quite a, it has a huge belly, as it looks like. Well, both skis are visible. Look at that. So he would have yeah. needed more speed than that. Yeah, he, oh, just, he just, he had to put his skis on the side to, to actually to miss, miss the rock. Exactly. But then Which he was out of uh, balance the in the ball. landing. Exactly. We understand each other perfectly, McFly. So an unfortunate uh, first run for Dennis Rissvoll in his first full year on the Freeride World Tour. He's going to pick up his skis. He's going to make it down to the bottom. That's the walk of shame. <laughs> Skiing's version, freeriding's version of the walk of shame. No doubt. I'd much rather do that one than the, uh, than the party version. And here's a look at our top three lines. Completely different from heights. That's very, very hey, interesting to see. It. Yeah. We have uh, Jeremy Heights first place all the way to skiers left, high speed into that couloir, and finishing high speed again <laughs> with a straight line, or the triple. Po um, Logan Pihota with line. the triple with on the, the classic line, yeah. but with a very unique, not no one has done that before, with a triple on top, and a 360 really nicely executed uh, in the middle part one of the only ones that really stood out as well on the middle section. And uh, we had a little bit of a difficulty in that last part where um, just before his last jump, but he managed to get back to contr full control and uh, land another huge air at the bottom. And uh, third place, Leo Slemet, a huge surprise, not surprise to me, but I was really happy to see him perform well because he had some great lines in the past and not tr have uh, finished them. And this time he did with a super creative into the center couloir, uh, huge air actually, th exactly the same air as we've just seen um, Sam Smoothie go down. He managed to clear the whole thing and then uh, follow up with a 
really big run and the last air really impressive out of that shelf i would say a bank really hard to tell where exactly to jump there was not a lot of space very a big respect for leo slimet for his line as well those top three are the ones to beat we have four more riders to come and another one of our rookies christopher turtle hope i'm pronouncing that correctly maybe turtle with a double l either way 26 years old and uh, top spot on the Freeride World Qualifying Europe Oceania rankings last year. Also and going wow, into the very technical yeah. part with a beautiful exit. Super tech, super fast, big cliff so far. Oh, yo, yo, you're gonna, gonna, we're going to see something big. Holy moly. Ooh. And oh, and no way. No, is that the spoiler for Jeremy? I think that's the spoiler for Jeremy. At the moment, he is on the way. I think if he's on his feet at the bottom, that and he, oh yo 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 yo, nearly gave it away. Just go straight. That was insane. Just go straight to the finish line, Christopher. No, it, it, it's not done. He he needs to finish strong, but uh, that wow, kind of he uh, yeah, what's he got put for a big here? score in the books already. Great execution. Pretty crazy. <sighs> Are you kidding me? Oh. Those kids, he's a rookie. Yep. I knew about his great performances on the qualifiers. Yep. I heard uh, Rene talk, talk about, about him. him. <laughs> yeah. And when Rene tone. talks about him, that's <laughs> yeah. usually a sign that there's a bit of talent there. Wow. Oh. This is insane. So here I have the very top part already, very technical, so relaxed, perfect execution, little really tiny, but here comes the one. Staying so close to the rocks, and he needed to, to have the perfect landing angle. And he just stumped it as if it would be nothing. He had nice. more difficulties on that little small sp uh, <laughs> jump in the middle. Wow, okay, well. That is impressive. That's all green all the way across the board. So, oh man, Jeremy. What? <laughs> yeah, poor Jeremy Heights. And what? I, I don't want to give it away. What it's a it's day for the Swedish rookies. Yes. <laughs> I mean, come on. What's what do they put in the water in Sweden <laughs> nowadays? <laughs> there it is again. The judging criteria. Just guys, give him a hundred points and let's be done with it. Wow. Yeah. Now, now he's give, nervous. Give him 98, 97. It's, it's, I mean, that's got to be. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just appearing. First free ride World Tour event in his career. Well, there we and go. he's yep. new leader, 90.5. Jumping up, like, and well-deserved. Oh, yeah. And with, with performances of the other riders that already go through the ceiling, and he just topped it That's crazy unbelievable so he's probably not even sure what's happening right now no he's just still standing there you're supposed to go over and take the hot <laughs> seat <laughs> Jerry's, Jeremy's I don't know what Jeremy has to do in the future I know to actually I know. win in an event Alaska <laughs> <sighs> I don't know so Christopher Granbaum already in uh, the men's snow category well, there were no there were no Swedes in the women's snowboarding. So, and uh, <laughs> Evelina Nilsson, I was speechless in the women's skiing. And geez, now, <laughs> I mean, ridiculous! Absolutely. We, and another rookie is coming up. Yep. There we go. And Christopher Turdell. Who? Go the Swedes. Okay. Martin Lentz. Might sound German, but he's not. He's but out of the U.S. of A. Uh, I had a brief talk yesterday in the lobby with him. There's some German and in his uh, blood, isn't there? There is a lot of German <laughs> in his blood. I think his mom is German, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise and, me. And uh, he is, uh, his German roots go to Garmisch-Partenkirchen, which is definitely really? the best resort within yeah. Germany to freeride yeah. and to ski. No surprise about that. And living in Squamish, Canada currently, but uh, likes to ride in place, Alta, Utah. Not a bad place to live yeah. for big mountain riding, and he goes full throttle <laughs> from the beginning. 
Also pretty unique approach. Yeah. Over to the side. Awesome. New school, he big transfer. Super Just styly, as long huh? as uh, yeah. Stefan Heusel, but with a tweak. Really styly. 360. Oh. And not sticking it. What a shame. Losing a ski as well. Even worse. Ay. Oh. It's Anyways. a pretty flat landing there. And he's yeah, bummed. He's bummed. Damn it. Was a good, really good yeah, run till then. Fantastic. That that first impression, hats off. Well, yeah, for sure. Definitely one to watch in Chamonix. The <laughs> level on the 2016 Swatch Free Ride World Tour <laughs> is going through the roof. Heavy. Ah, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. How did that work? Because, I mean, imagine if these guys, you know could just keep their skis on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, it's crazy. And it's great It's great to see the boys sending it as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's talent. They're, they're competitive as heck. And, uh, and they are not afraid to go big. So it's going to be quite a year on tour this year, Martin. Yeah. Don't slash it in the rocks, man. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. It's going to be an Martin amazing Lentz. tour. That so is for sure. 20 years young, another one of the 20 year olds, and very, very impressive, even if he is going to finish at the bottom of the standings for today's event. A very impressive performance from the young American. So we don't need to wait for his scores, although we will. But it will be a DNF, because as soon as the skier falls and loses his ski, that's what happens. Did not finish. And we'll go straight back up to the top for a former world champion. Another one of the boys who won it in his rookie year. 2014 world champ, Loic Colomb Paton, out of La Clusa, France. If there's anyone who could j uh, get Dennis Roswald, or who is it? No, Christopher, sorry. Christopher yeah. Todell out of his uh, hot seat. It's this guy. Then it's this guy. Unbelievably talented, experienced in freestyle and free riding in his rookie season, claimed the title, came back, another win in Chamonix. But from then on, he was struggling a little bit. Still going big, not as constant anymore as in the year before. And he's not afraid of rocks at no. all, <laughs> as if they would not be there. As we just saw, so the 29 Very creative now. line choices normally, and I'm pretty sure he's going to send this in a triple as well, just as we've seen the others. No, even more creative. Look, he loves fresh totally tracks. Do. That's exactly it. Luckily here, there are quite a lot of uh, grass patches on top of the rocks. I was skiing just next to his line yesterday. So that's the advantage and he's going wow. big. Wow! He's going big. And he yeah. sticks it as if it would be nothing. Stomps it. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> Not the biggest cliff of the day, but top three. No, huh? yeah, I would say so. Yeah, well, the Frenchies, they like, they like those big cliffs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and All it didn't right. even backseat nothing. No, no, no. That was uh, that's what we call stomping. If you want to know what stomping is, that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at it again. That one, that one. No, that was the top air. That was the one in the middle. Always trying. He's always making it look smooth, relaxed. It's the same air again that's as before. Dance. And here comes the more technical area. Yeah, well, the judge is very impressed. Is Here is a takeoff. <laughs> and look at the landing. Yeah. Oh, tiny bit. Tiny, okay. yeah, yeah, with his hands. Tiny bit back seat. Well, lots of green He's there. Happy. So, yeah, definitely an impressive run. Loic is stoked. It I don't see it it's not gonna all the way to the rankings. top. No, no, no. But, uh, but it's going to push to the very, to the, We've got to the top five, I would say. In the 80s. 
top five in fifth is Fabio Studer with 84 points. Here we go, Julian Lopez is currently in sixth. Really impressive. There we go, the French speaking crew there. Giving him a big round of applause, a few hugs. It was International Hug Day yesterday, <laughs> by the way. Oh, uh, yeah? Yep, serious. And 72.5 and ninth position. Just to show you all how competitive this category is this year. I mean, that was ridiculous stuff. And Aymar Navarro, who we saw in the first run down the mountain, is in 10th, just to give you an idea. Because he went massive as well, yeah. huh? Yeah. And then there were not that many to go. And here come those clouds. So perfect timing. Just the the face itself, competition face, still has some good sunshine in it. Yeah, so yeah, there plenty, is no difference for the riders for to come. But uh, we're happy to push it through and uh, not have the clouds covering the sun before the last rider is down. Kyle Taylor out of Bozeman, Three, Utah. Two, one, Utah. I'm on a limb there. If I'm wrong, Americans don't hate me. Is on course. He finished up 17th last year and uh, slipped into the running with uh, when Kevin Gurry pulled out. So nice cliff at the top. Obvious one to take with him. Just like Rainy Balkaret and Co. Going into the rider's right hand side one. Beautiful takeoff spot. Boom. Classic, very solid, as we know, Carl. To really step it up or to, to finish up very high in the ranking, you have to pull out the, the magic rabbit at the moment. <laughs> I mean, and definitely. Just look at that last run from Loic Colomb Paton. That was mind blowing stuff. And that only put him into ninth position. Ooh. Okay, well, if he jumps that cliff and Ooh, sticks comes it, he the might magic win. Rabbit. But yeah, it could, could be. No, no, Either no, that no, or no. he's lost. Okay, oh, yeah, Kyle, yeah, yeah. what you doing here, buddy? Oh, really? Oh, is that what you're looking for? No, no. No. And you're then not. back into the danger zone. Are you going to traverse back over to that couloir, please? Thanks for backing up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you do us all a big favor and yourself yeah. the best, the most. Um, yeah, because and then no, that, that, not wasn't, that wasn't the rabbit out of the hat we wanted no. to see. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's balls and then there's stupidity, and that would have been yeah. kind and of And he's not. He's no, 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 that's super smart, <laughs> um, well thought, and such a great performer and, and, and contestant. No, that's great exactly skier. it. Just got a little lost there. Yeah. And or didn't like the you know the entry that he saw that everybody else had taken, and uh, and that's a perfect example again uh, of we of you had to of an say experienced no. free rider saying yeah. no. That's yes. exactly it. And the whole world watching him while doing it. Yeah. So uh, backing up and saying no is really tough, and uh, but it has to be done to stay safe, no matter what, no matter what conditions. And that's exactly what Kyle has done. So thank you for a little lesson in, I wouldn't say free riding etiquette, but uh, definitely yeah, it in is the do's the, and yeah. don'ts of free <laughs> It is what to do on the, the, the tactic to do it for a very long time. Yes. To ride for another day. Yeah, showing ex that's exactly it. He's looking back at it and thinking, going, damn it, where was that entry? <laughs> yeah. I was looking at good it. Good thing I didn't jump. In the morning, it looked better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, they just got a little bit lost. But that's what happens when you, can get, when you get a little bit lost. Okay. Charlie Lyons, the second of our Kiwis. Hopefully, he'll be a bit more successful than Sam Smoothie was. Out of uh, the Southern Alps, New Zealand. Out of the gate. Same cliff, this time with a... Uh, a little Japan grab and a 360. He's no stranger to freestyle tricks. Okay. Oh, getting hocked up on the landing a little bit, but 
Thank you for staying on your feet, Charlie. Yes. Fluid riding, cool. solid stumps, nice. yep. as we know him. Well done. Well done, I have well the impression done. sometimes the harsher the conditions, the better he rides. Could be that Kiwis really don't matter what kind of terrain it is. As soon as, as, soon as there's snow on rocks, they're going for it. And well, he's definitely one of those that can perform well on all as, conditions. As his compatriot Sam said last night, it doesn't matter how much snow there is as long as, as, long as you've got steep trannies. So. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he's searching there's right now. That was a steep tranny. But he just hit a rock yep. in the landing. He is Lost okay. His helmet. He's okay, though. Hey, they make them tough <laughs> in, <laughs> in New Zealand. In New Zealand, don't they? They do. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I don't think Charlie's going to be able to climb back up and uh, recover his second ski. He's not even trying. Oh, yeah, yeah. 360 here, it could have gone wrong already, but uh, he managed really well with the, the ski bringing back into the fall line. Here, perfect execution. Transfer, yep. And here comes the crux, sending it bigger than anyone else and landing just after the rock. And and there was a rock yeah, underneath under. as he well. Hit the, hit the exposed rock with his tail, and then there was no snow cover whatsoever. And how did he lose his helmet? So all rocks underneath that, well... Maybe he forgot about through that second closing tumble. it. <laughs> I don't know. Ouch. But it looks he's okay. Yeah, no, he's definitely okay. He's oh, that's okay. That's all good. I'll just yeah. finish the Run. no helmet, one ski, one pole. Doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> Got to hand it to the Kiwis. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely are entertaining <laughs> to watch. Oh, my goodness. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Scaring us in the last yep. minute of the event. Oh, wow. Oh, Charlie and Sam. You guys are uh, from another planet. Okay, you heard <laughs> it. I'm okay. I'm fine. It's all good. It does have a little bit of snow on my head. <laughs> Oh, sorry to laugh, but it's nervous laughter in case you couldn't tell. I'm not, I'm not. Okay. And as always, Mike is ready with the mic. He's going to get in there and get a few words from Charlie Lyons. Mike, what is it with the Kiwis today? Yeah, dude. Mike. Okay. When? Okay. <laughs> Tell me. You know, I just came out here to have a bit of fun. And uh, luckily, I'm okay. And hit a rock there. I, you know, a little off course. And, yeah, you know, but, you know, conditions are good. You know, we're out here having fun, you know. So. Did you get caught up on something? Is that, uh, is that how you no, got I thrown off? Went on a rock and went too big. And, yeah. I'm glad you're all right, buddy. Yeah. Glad it's working out. Uh, you're going to ride again. Okay, Dave? well. <laughs> I've never seen Charlie Lyons without words, and that proves that he's shaken. Yeah, no, definitely. Just here to have fun. Juan Vergara, ladies and gentlemen. Another bit. Oh, no, Danny for no cut. Excuse me. All right, pointing to the sky. The Andorra local, who joined us here last year, finished up 12th. Can he do better this year? Also not a stranger to the Freeride World Tour. He has been with us for a whole season, performing well and always spectacular. No! Oh, that's such a shame in his home terrain. I hope he didn't hurt his knees. That high sider was awful. Oh no! Okay, well, unfortunately, Danny has injured himself. The uh, crossed poles over his head means I'm gonna need some help getting myself out of here. So he's gonna sit down and see what went wrong. 
He's, he landed a little back seat, yeah, and wheeled it out. And then this uh, debris, and it's a little, it's quite firm. It, it was already sliding two days ago, so this debris is really compact, and that popped him popped into a, a high side. It actually spinned him around like a flat spin, and this compression just uh, busted his knee. It is unfortunately quite a classic knee injury, injury. how it happens. Oh man. Okay, well, Such he can't shame. ride out. So the guides are, as you see now, skiing down to him. They're going to assess the situation. And most likely, we will be seeing our medical helicopter uh, fly in and they'll drop a, a rope down and attach Danny to the rope and, uh, and fly him off the face. So as we said, there are plenty of doctors who are also guides or at least very, very confident skiers on course in the face at every single one of these events. And this is exactly what they're here for in case a rider does get injured. The nearest doctor will ski down to the injured rider, will assess the situation. We already know that Danny is injured. As you can see, another guide coming down to, uh, to help out. He'll be speaking with the event organization on the radio and we'll be making the decision whether to if they can get Danny down to the bottom of the mountain or at least off of the competition part of the face uh, to see uh, if they can get him off manually. Otherwise, they will fly him in and hook him up uh, to a line on the helicopter and fly him off the face that way. And then he'll be inspected at the bottom of the mountain. Obviously not a life-threatening injury. We can, we can tell you already that he's, yeah, uh, he's, he's done something to his knees or at least to, uh, to his legs, um, which is unfortunately very common to the sport of skiing. And while we're waiting for the helicopter, we have Mike back down at the bottom with our uh, current the uh, current occupier of the hot right, seat, back Christopher down to Turnell. Finish the land of whip whip. Let me hear it, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm down here with Christopher from Sweden who has just won this event. How are you feeling, man? Unbelievable. I, mean, I have a couple of different line choices, but I went for the win and I was lucky and stumped it. Okay, what made you choose the line you chose? Um, I wanted to win. This is the thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what were the elements? Can you tell me a little bit more specifically? What were the elements of, of that run? Uh, I wanted to start it out really steep with some technical skiing, and then I had a really big jump, a little bit bigger than I thought, I think. But I landed it, and it felt super good. Well, it, it sure looked good, man. Yet the bra, man. Yeah, 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 you know it. Oh, that's cool. Well, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to see you on the podium consistently this season. How's it feeling so far in the tour for you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, better than I uh, expected. Like uh, I didn't, uh, I couldn't believe uh, this would end up. Th this is my, my first real World Cup competition. So yeah, I was really nervous, but I decided to go big. Yeah. And it paid off. Yes, sir, it did. Yes, Christopher. And uh, so uh, you are gunning for Alaska and you're gunning for Valbier. This is true. What are you thinking? Tell me about. Tell me how how you're planning this season. Um, I haven't really made plans. I guess I'm gonna start looking at trips to Alaska. Ah, okay. Well, maybe we'll ask you that one. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Cool. Oh, we're still going. Okay. Well, as long as we're waiting here, I'm just gonna take a quick selfie. There we go. Okay, that one's good. <laughs> We're, uh, yes, the last rider did crash, which means Christopher here is the one. Yeah, 
gratis. <laughs> gratis. And uh, we've, uh, we've busted out with some sun for you guys as well. It looked like we were going to have flat lights. So you lucked out as well with timing. You had some good sun. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing, that you have visibility. Like, the snow can always be tricky in different places, but as long as you have good visibility, and I think all the riders have really, really good visibility today. So, yeah. well, we, we had one public question that, that referred to, what is your best, uh, best asset? Is it going to be free ride, or is it going to be purely, purely uh, freestyle or purely free ride up here? What's going to help? Uh, it's going to be free ride. I'm working on the freestyle part, but free ride is my specialty. Great. Thank you. All right. Back to you guys. Thank you much. All right. Thank you, Mike. Always, uh, always interesting to hear from Mike down at the finish line. And, uh, yep, just when you thought it was over, it's not because the madman, Ivan Mad Malikov, is still up in the start gate. And there might even be another rider behind him, too. But uh, the, the start list has been playing games with me today because as far as I'm concerned, Juan Bergata still has to drop in. But Mad Malikov is now on course. The Russian wild card. Heading to the skier's left of the face, all the way skier's left, jumping huge in the very top part of the, the face. There is not a mu much snow cover on that part. So I'm happy that he didn't hook up on, the, on rocks. Now he's on the far, far skiers left. No one else to ski there. You see fresh tracks in front of him. That's one thing we never know what to expect from. And another I huge <laughs> jump. And I think it's exactly the same jump he did last year. He uh, went over to the venue. Yeah. To the I think I remember venue of last like season. That. And he crashed. He had some revenge to do. <laughs> he crashed badly on that jump last season. And uh, this time it was perfectly executed. He's going for another big feature here, you can tell. Unluckily, he's not. He he's hesitating a little bit, which will yeah. reduce his score a little. Oh, still good jump, a little bit of a back slap. Woo! Now he controlled it. Finishing that, off that well. Could have been, that could have been dangerous. Yes. And let me correct myself. He actually, he was a wild card two years ago and then didn't re-qualify re last year, but went and did the free ride world qualifying events and re-qualified through, this, through our uh, qualification tour. Here we have pretty decent, a very big yeah. jump on the top where it's super shallow. You see him backseat because he's afraid of r hitting rocks. Here again, uh, there is so narrow margin or few margin to hit those landings here a full-on nose a pop in the in this uh in this takeoff that sent him way down this couloir well the judges liked it there was a lot of green there from mad malakoff and uh no we didn't make up the nickname that's from his rider's bio he put that down yeah <laughs> And he uh, He's owned it on the qualifier Great series, guy. Mad Malika. Yes. So once again, yeah. Uh, wild card on to tour in uh, 2015. Did not re-qualify directly through the Freeride World Tour, but through the Freeride World Qualifiers for the Europe Oceania region. And he's back with us, and we're happy to have him because he is always... He's a surprise package. Oh, yes. <laughs> you just it's not over until he's coming. <laughs> you just never know what he's going to do. And we love that. Keeps it interesting. Keeps us on our feet. He definitely has a big smile on his face. You can see the judges on the screen reviewing the last run of Mad Malikov. And uh, we're gonna wait for a few minutes till we get final scores. It was a really good run of Mad Malikov. Even uh, decided to go all the way skiers left. We haven't seen anyone going further to skiers left. Actually, he, he even uh, 
skied parts that were open last year. Um, and he uh, re jumped, he <laughs> re <-dumped. laughs> last year he and had some uh, issues with this face yes. that needed to be taken care of he actually exploded last year the both skis came off yeah. and uh he exploded I but uh, this year he, uh, oh yeah <laughs> and this year he made it the revenge is the, his. the revenge of mad malakoff <laughs> i love it so the judges just having having one last look at that run from ivan malakoff the 36-year-old out of Smolensk, Russia. And there is our current leader, Christopher Trudell. And uh, I don't think it will be any surprise if we, if we confirm what uh, Mike said earlier, is that uh, this young man has won the contest. A new face, new leader, and new winner. Yeah, fantastic, the Swedish rookie once again. Great day for Sweden on the podium in uh, three of our four categories. Not bad at all. Way to go, the Swedes. And of course, we'll have a full wrap. Okay, scores are in. Yeah, the judges loved it. <laughs> you can see he's stoked. There it is. Third place. 86.62. And That's third great. place, they love the big jumps, they love the creativity, Yes. and he is fired up. That's the result of a lifetime for Ivan Malikov, first ever podium. You'd think he'd won the world tour with that yes. kind of reaction. <laughs> Gotta like, love it. <laughs> so he got the score a little yeah. earlier than uh, oh, the yeah. screen. That's all good. Oh, he's loving it. Well deserved, what a line. Okay, so there is our winner, ski man Christopher Trudell, out of Sweden. And how dry and reserved was that interview? Yeah, I was going for the winning line. <laughs> what do you of think? Of course he was. That's, <laughs> that's why I came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're going to see much more in the competitions to come. Here uh, we have our top three we, uh, lines. Yep. The last rider mixed the podium up again. Um, Jeremy Heights stayed in second place, and uh, also the leader stayed, uh, Mr. Turdel, yep. stayed with his first win, first appearance on the Freeride World Tour. It's Reigning world champ George Rodney in 16th, can do better. We'll be expecting more in Chamonix, George. And uh, there we go, the equal 19th down the bottom that did not finish. Clement Mayer, Willie Lindbergh, and Derek Altman. But everybody put on a great show here today in all of our categories, but I must say the men's skiers were especially Impressive here on the Becerra Negra face in Bainor Arcalis, Andorra for stop number one on the Swatch Freeride World Tour 2016. Uh, it was impressive. Yeah. What a first edition, like mind-blowing uh, competition. We, we had really low tight conditions when we came here. It was not 100% sure if we can run the event. Just uh, two weeks ago, it was really critical. And luckily, though, over the last few two weeks, we had a few snowstorms coming in, preparing that venue for the elite of free riders. Unbelievable action, new faces on the tour. There we go, Mother Nature came with the goods and so did the riders. Thank you very much. We're gonna have a quick look at uh, next stop on tour. That's Chamonix, Mont Blanc, France, coming at you in just a few weeks' time. Until then, all the news, all the action. Check out the replays, etc., on FreeRideWorldTour.com. Signing off from by Nord Arcalis. I'm Dave Mailman with Martin Winkler. Have a good one. Free riding. You drop in. Stay safe out there. Bye.
questions at all.